All right, I'm going to kick this off if, if that's okay. Um, so, firstly, I just want to thank everybody for coming. We have people who have flown in uh, from all over the place. We have more people coming in later today. Uh, so, I, I do want to thank you all. Uh, this is a CBA initiative. Uh, so, obviously, I'd like to thank the, the exec team on the CBA and, of course, Keely and Associates, uh, Mark, for being here, and Daniela for organizing this for us. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I am a newer member to the CBA board. Uh, so I, I'd like you all to be patient with me, uh, but this is something I'm very good at, so hopefully this will translate in, in, into this discussion. Uh, I thought we'd kick this off today as an introduction. There's a lot of people in this room that don't know each other, so I'll start off. So my name's Kareem Kowaja. I am one of the founders of Liquid E-Juice. I've been within this industry for about seven years now. I've been vaping for about seven years. I've been active in, in the industry since about 2012. Um, I, I know all of you, so that's fantastic. So this makes my life a lot easier. Uh, and, uh, and I'm actually really looking forward to today's meeting on understanding everybody else's input on the same problems that I see that impact me as equally as they impact me. Daryl? Daryl Tappas, the Executive Director of the CBA. Um, it's been a pleasure to serve the membership in the association since uh, March. Um, my role is really to deal with the operation of, uh, of the CBA um, and um, really dealing with a lot that, uh, that's coming uh, with us for the next uh, six months when it comes to regulation and legislation in partnership with Katie. Um, my name is Maria Kabayawani and I'm a big shop owner. I've been doing this since 2013 and baking since I think about 2010, 2011, somewhere around there. And I just Thank you for including me. My name is Lars Van I'm from London. Uh, I'm the owner of It's Not Smoke, It's Just Vapor. Uh, I've been doing this for over oh, seven years. Uh, I basically started selling these things as soon as I started <laughs> using them because I use it everywhere and everybody kept saying, where'd you get that? So uh, I, I, one of the first brick and mortars uh, in Ontario and uh, I've been a member of ACTA uh, because I, I want regulation. I, I, I've wanted regulation since the beginning, and I, but I, I just want sensible regulation. I am Charles Pisano. I am one of the owners of Vape Meat, and one of the directors of Canada's Vape Expo, uh, the trade show. And uh, I've been out for about five years as well, I've been for past over seven. I'm also vice president of the CBA, and my job is to coordinate with our committee chairs and act as a liaison between different departments. I'm Sean Krieger, owner of River City Vapes in Edmonton. Uh, I've been for five years, I guess, as owner for just many. Former president of CBA, uh, one of the early members of CBA, fully support the idea of uh, fair and equitable regulations, and I'm just about to be a part of all this. Great. Uh, Mark Keeley, I'm the principal at KA. We're the agency of record for the Canadian Vaping Association, and we have been since 2014. Our firm uh, does a heck of a lot of public policy work. We're very well known at the provincial and federal levels across Canada for the work that we've done. This is probably one of about five controversial pieces of legislation that we've had a lot of, uh, of uh, intimate involvement with, prescription drug reform being one, energy being another, gaming being another, and uh, obviously this is on the, the tip of a lot of politicians and bureaucrats' uh, minds across Canada in every single province. The only two provinces that haven't put any legislative initiative on the table yet are Saskatchewan and Alberta. Uh, but they, we certainly understood that they'll be coming soon. I, like you, Lars, uh, think that we need to have regulation in this industry. And uh, one of the things that this organization had said almost at the outset, they agreed with us that they want to work with government. <coughs> so I think that's an important distinction that you've made as an organization, and that has garnered you a tremendous amount of credibility uh, from governments across Canada. I'm very, very proud of the work that we're doing with you. I'm very proud how this organization and this industry has matured over the last couple of years. I'm Angie Decker. I am the Here to find as much 
Uh, Joe Prada, owner of Wix and Wires Vape Shop. Uh, my shop's been in operation for two years. I've uh, been vaping for five. Uh, previous to, uh, as I call it, the vape life, I was a uh, uh, VP of operations in the casino industry. And I was also part of the uh, commission that was always doing negotiations with various states and uh, various members of different countries. So I am looking forward to uh, fair regulation. Uh, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you, John. Hi, I'm Boris uh, Diller, uh, co founder of One Age Smoke. Um, I'm also a new board member on the frame, uh, chair of communications. And my objective is to streamline communications and increase transparency. And how long has One Age Smoke been? Um, four years incorporated, planning a year before that. I was personally involved about seven years in the vaping industry as a marketer. Daniela Kalatasi, I work with Mark, and um, what he said. <laughs> Plus, I, uh, I just want to say how um, exciting it's been to be part of this effort since the very beginning, and seeing how government has worked its way through, you know, at the different provincial levels, and kind of taken some steps forwards and backwards, and then two steps forward, and I think a lot of that has to do with the involvement of uh, stakeholders like the CBA, and teaching them, and, uh, and offering a different opinion and uh, an alternate uh, perspective that in many cases they have taken into account. So I think that's been quite rewarding. And uh, from our perspective, you don't often get that when it's the start of an industry, the beginning, and you're there right from the beginning. So that part of it has been, uh, has been quite rewarding from, uh, from the work that we've been able to, to help with. Awesome, thank you. So Kaizen, I, I, I must have got like 15 different calls and different messages saying what's a Kaizen. Uh, so Kaizen is a Japanese term, and the term Kaizen literally means to make it better, right? Uh, does it really relate to what we're doing? It does. Is this, are these tools that you would normally use in this, in this kind of environment? No, they're not. <laughs> but there are some key tools that you can use within a domain process. So domain is define, measure, improve, uh, control, uh, which is really a Six Sigma methodology. Um, there are some great tools within that that we can use within this platform to really go and identify what are some pain points that we feel within these proposals. What are good solutions which, which we can go back or recommendations we can make. And then really take a look at an impact difficulty matrix with um, amongst ourselves to say that if we go back to a higher authority and say we want to give this as a solution, as a fix, what's the impact and what's the, what's the actual difficulty? So again, strategizing as a team here on where are you going to spend most of your efforts and what's going to be the most you're going to do, right? The next thing I'd like to go over, which is I think extremely important for this session, is we've created some, somewhat of a project charter um, for this is this is really my project, and within that charter, you know, there's things we will be filling out, things we will be going through. Uh, this is really for us within the CV, but I wanted to share this with you on the way that we're actually packaging this together. Uh, what's really important to call out on this screen though is what's in scope and what's out of scope, right? So the purpose of this Kaizen, and has anybody here ever been through a Kaizen before? Or any type of six of activity? So we have a few things, a few tools that are in front of you. So these tools are your notepad, of course, for you to fill in your notes. Uh, but there's post-its, and the reason why there's post-its is our, uh, the post-its are basically what we're going to use as a tool to go back and put up all of our suggestions. Things that are going to, going to go into a parking lot, we could pick a parking lot anywhere in this room. Uh, the room is big enough for us to put post-its on the wall somewhere. Um, but as we go through the actual proposals, uh, our suggestions, pain points, solutioning is going to be written onto these, uh, onto these post-its, and we will, we will be posting them onto the chart. The reason why we use post-its is because then we can take those solutions or pain points and we can move them around onto different chart papers and different strategies and so forth. Um, but the key thing is what's in scope. This is to review the proposals within Bill S5. So that's basically stating that we are looking to work within Bill S5. Uh, what is out of scope is anything that is outside that is not related. It's not that it's not valid. It's just literally there won't be enough time to go over. Um, I, as the chair for government regulations for the CBA, I highly recommend that if there's something you want to call out, call it out. We can put it onto a parking lot. We can talk about it later. You all know me. You know where to find me. Uh, we can go back and discuss them at a later point. 
Uh, if, if, there, if we find something or we call out something that's so important that we need to hold another Kaizen session for it or another meeting for it, I'm open to do that. But it's just important to stay within scope, uh, scope only because of the time frame. Can I just Absolutely. Clarification. So we're talking about the feedback report to the regulations that Health Canada did. So we're not really talking about the bill, it's feedback to Health Canada for their 10 point regulation and then the other two. Absolutely, okay. so so after this slide, I'm actually gonna have Daryl uh, do a bit of a preface, a message from Sean, Sean couldn't be here today. Uh, but that's, it, it's, it's, this is an opportunity for us to go back and create a response to what was there. We've been asked to create a response. Mm -hmm. And I thought the best way for us to go back and create a response was to bring some SMEs into a room so we have a collective voice. And from here, I'd like to pass it over to Daryl, who, uh, who can just do a brief introduction for the CDA. Yeah, so uh, uh, first we wanted to, uh, to thank uh, Krim for uh, pulling together this group. Um, you're going to see a series of, uh, of these types of events throughout the year. It helps us prepare um, and bring together the knowledge that all of you have uh, from the industry and to uh, help really prepare our responses in a way that's inclusive from a national organization. That's why you're, you know, we're seeking to, uh, to have representatives from coast to coast, uh, different regional markets, major urban, uh, more rural type settings or smaller urban settings. Um, to make sure that we uh, can be reflective in our response. It's uh, government um, and specifically the bureaucratic arm, um, they really like to hear that because they're making, especially at the federal level, they're making regulations and legislation that's supposed to be inclusive of all communities, of, uh, of, of, of all different regions within the country. So um, I know uh, from uh, Sean's messaging is that uh, the other thing is, is that we, we want to make sure that the, the membership of the CDA knows that we're not taking information in the call. So it's not you know just three people sort of saying, hey, yeah, this is what I think is best. It's really reaching out as much as we can and bringing those, uh, those <coughs> thoughts together. And then utilizing the skill set that we have like through, uh, through Mark and Daniela to be able to, to do that in a uh, language that government can onboard. So, you know, I've been part of the political process for 20 years and I speak in a language that is very, very specific to them. And being able to take all these great ideas and then filter those down and in a way that they can bring that into their language is really, really important. So that's why having the investment of, of KMA here to listen to all the great uh, thoughts and ideas that you have and then be, them being able to translate that. Uh, just to, uh, to make the point even further, um, uh, Karim and Sean and, and, and Mark are going up to Ottawa. They have a series of interactions with Health Canada and the government uh, a lot. Right? So this isn't just like a one-time event where we sit for an hour or a day or, or a two-day period and we throw everything out there, put it into a dock, and then it just sits out there forever. These are ongoing living items. So they will continue to grow and change and, um, and be impacted by, uh, by events outside. I know certainly Battery safety would have been a would have been a big one when there was a couple of issues in battery safety, which really put it on their radar. So it went from something that we were talking about with government to a different sense of urgency. Uh, so you'll see as the conversations come through today that we may uh, have to readjust in two months because there's a different priority or something happens. Um, so it's a, it's a phenomenal process. I think uh, the last piece that I would uh, add to this is that as an important industry stakeholder, the onus is on us to do. Right, we talk about fair uh, regulation and legislation, um, and I'll steal a term from Mark, is that uh, this is how we put our best foot forward. Right? This is how we do that in a professional framework that, um, that not only represents the interests of vaping and vapors, but also the interests of Canadians at large. So we fit within that framework. So really, that's the, that's the important message. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Mark, would you like to do a, a small insert before we get going? Well, I think um, what maybe contextualizing this would help a little bit, Kareem. Sure. So that we know why we're doing this and why we're talking about this in the context of your role as the chairman of, of government relations. Sure. I think, um, and I, maybe I'll, I'll just set this on the table because there are some things that we need to, to know very, very clearly. Because I think there's some frustration in the, in the industry across Canada about this. But I just want to sort of apropos to what Daryl had said, too. Government speaks in a different language than what all of us do. And uh, we have this saying in our business, you don't go into the court without a lawyer. So you don't go into the hallowed halls of government anywhere in Canada without good public policy 
uh, advocacy and uh, counsel. So that, that puts us in a position where we could, we could certainly help. Just so we all know too, we're, we're not doing this on Wednesday. I've been in this business for 30 years. I know how government operates, and they know how, that we know how government operates, so that's important too. But let me talk about it in the context of Bill S-5. The way this works, and just so we all have a very keen understanding here, Bill S-5 doesn't usurp what's happening in the provinces, and vice versa. What happens in the provinces doesn't necessarily uh, usurp what could happen at the federal government level. The way our government works is we have a confederation in Canada. I'm just being a very uh, uh, base with you, but I think it's important that you understand. Uh, government of Canada acts on the interest of approvals and regulations for health products and safety of those health products from, from a national perspective. The provinces get to dictate how it impacts on their own um, industry, whether it's up in, uh, in the business of, of gaming, it's, a, it's in, it's in uh, regulation at the gaming level with the attorneys general offices or the, uh, or the alcohol gaming commissions in the provinces. And the same thing with, um, with healthcare and an issue like bigger. So all the provinces have authority in terms of, of how this will, will play out from their own perspective as it relates to the health of their people and the money that they spend on healthcare. But at the national level, it's on the product and it's uh, approval in this country and the uh, regulations there too. So that's what's happening with respect to Bill S-5. It is already a done deal, and I think it's very clear, as Daryl had said, we're not here to debate whether Bill S-5 is a good thing or a bad thing. This industry is son of vaping. And so the uh, sooner that you went to the son of uh, smoking, I beg your pardon. So vaping, uh, is, it's, it's entirely appropriate for the government to put this under the piece of legislation that it's in. Everybody argues that point and says, well, it should be under its own and they will, they will never agree to that. You can shake your head, you can say this is, this is wrong, we could, we could debate this till the cows come home, that will never happen. So they have put it in where it is. And one thing that we have to know as uh, people in this industry, if you're going to play in this industry, is that the government will say that we write this piece of legislation as if it's prohibited. And the reason they do that is it's because we are son of smoking. So as long as we understand that, and we're, we're going down the path to say we're in an industry that this has happened, that gives us a firm uh, baseline for us to understand what's happening with Bill S-5. You made a point uh, to Kareem at the outset that the government of Canada has not yet put any uh, thought to, uh, uh, to regulation. Let me go back to, to, to digress for a second. There is a fundamental difference, and I want you all to know around this table, between government and Health Canada. So government is the uh, Parliament of Canada, they are elected. So when you are elected government, you're not a liberal government, you're not a conservative government, you're not an NDP government, you are the government for the capital G. So you represent every Canadian, the mantle of power accrues to you because you have the majority of the seats in the, in the House of Commons. So when you call them the government, you can't say they are the liberals, you can't say they are conservatives because he is the prime minister for everybody, not just for people who voted for she is the Minister of Health, not just for Liberals, but for everybody who uh, uh, is in this country who falls under the purview of those who are deemed to be governed by the government of Canada. So we need to have that very clear distinction. They are politicians. They think in politics. They think in, um, in uh, what's best expedient, what's going to generate um, uh, active interest and support. So don't, don't be under any misapprehension either that a lot of times what government is doing is they'll, they'll make these kinds of uh, things happen even under controversial circumstances like the last five, but on the, on the proviso and with the exception that if it doesn't match what you're seeing with, with the tax reform, if it doesn't match what people are saying, they will change. But if they don't change, it's because they know that they're on the right path. So if we, if we have that in our thinking as well as it relates to Bill S-5, that the government is doing that, how are they getting that, that uh, information? How are they getting that advice? It is a very transparent process. And if you think it isn't transparent, you have to think again. The process by which they're doing this goes through a rigorous um, a program by Health Canada. Health Canada owns this file. And Health Canada is saying, we have best brains exchanges. We have uh, all sorts of... Uh, 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 open fora, and they've seen you've seen fora across Canada on this issue of vaping for the last three years, and they actually uh, have had outreach to stakeholders like the CBA. 
the reason why that's important for you to understand is because Health Canada isn't doing this in a vacuum. They know that this industry, again, and I think it's important that, that, that you uh, have made this point clear a couple times that I've spoken to you, Kareem, that they could have said, just like they could have done, just like they did in India, if you read the, the stuff out of uh, the global form on nicotine and if you read, read all the other information that's happening with respect to this industry worldwide, there are several countries who are fuming that because they banned vaping in their country. This country did not do that. And I think it's a really important distinction that we have to, to play into our thinking. And we could all, again, we could all be uh, critical of Bill S5, but the option or the opposite of Bill S5 is to ban vaping. And I think you, you need to be very clear about that, that that's what is on the other side of the table because there are politicians in Ottawa who say that this piece of legislation is way too permissive. So if we, and again, we have the benefit uh, uh, with the uh, chairs previous um, and government relations chairs previous to travel to Howard Halls of every legislature in this country and in Ottawa and the uh, opposition would say this piece of legislation sucks because it's too permissive. They would like to see more stringent regulation than what's happening. So I think as, as we go down this path, it's important for us to know Health Canada is advising the government on what they think would be regulation. Let me go back to the point that I'm going to stop about transparency. The government right now is accepting, uh, will we will be accepting a recommendation from Health Canada on regulation. That process to, to set up the regulations is being done through a series of these kinds of exercises from people who are noted experts and industry participants. What they're asking for is, and they'll prioritize, the kind of work that you're doing here. And if you don't think that's true, think again. Because they had said, they will say this is a transparent process, we want everybody to participate, but they will prioritize it in triage who, uh, who they're gonna listen to. And frankly, in this particular case, CBA has a very, very good mantle for this because they have called us particularly several times to say make sure that you do this kind of process. So, so Kareem, I think you've done the right thing by putting this kind of rigor and discipline around this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hope that this context says to you that we're going down the path. There are no regulations yet. They're putting proposals on the table and they want this kind of debate to happen. And, and lastly, it uh, serves as a launching point for, um, for these types of, um, uh, this type of rigor moving forward. This is what we need to do as a, as a membership in a collective group. Uh, for the years coming up, it's, it's really going to set us apart and, and garner a lot of uh, a lot more positive attention. I just want to make one quick call, call it. Knowing everybody in this room, I know what you heard might not be exactly what you want to hear, right? Just being just calling it out, being completely fair on your thoughts on Bill S five and whatever it may be. All I want to call out, you know, on our end is this is an opportunity for us, right? We're all in this room as a team, as a unit, different parts of Canada different you know, manufacturing from retail to all sorts of things, smaller manufacturing, larger manufacturing. We should use this opportunity to, to, to really benefit all of us. So within the time and the space that we have, let's all try to put our best foot forward and work within the parameters that I'm kind of setting for you guys. Cool? cool. Sound good? So what's our process of, of this whole event? So what we, what we will be doing is uh, it, it's going to be very important for us to kind of go through every proposal one by one, right? So we have 10 different proposals, uh, which we will have an opportunity to go back and talk on. Please don't mind this. This is just me showing an example of what the final product would look like. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through each proposal one by one. And first we're going to identify what are the pain points within this proposal. So what are the issues? Um, and that's where we're going to use our notepads and we're going to squiggly on these notepads, whatever these issues are. And we're going to start posting them up on this chart. By doing that, um, what we end up doing afterwards is we'll go into another tool where we'll use those pain points and we'll start ranking them, right? So, so literally a pain point could be, well, I don't like the bill. That's fine. That's a pain point. We'll put it up, right? But another pain point might be, well, within this proposal, this might impact the retail store to be able to do this, or it might impact the manufacturer to be able to go do this. So we'll go back and just start identifying. Is everybody okay with that? Everybody on the same page? So proposal number one, let's, let, let's get right into it. So this is 
The proposal, the first proposal within the document that was shared. Just get it out of the way for me. I don't like the bill. There you don't go. like the bill. It's awesome. on there. There we go. Fantastic. So proposal number one. Health Canada proposes that all vaping products which contain nicotine display their nicotine concentration in milligrams slash milligrams. Now, mind you, some of these proposals might not be a big issue. Some of these proposals might, we might go through very quickly. Some we might have a bigger discussion. So this is proposal number one. Thoughts around the table. Open for um, You know, a layman may not understand what the percentage, like the customer typically gravitates and asks for clarification of what, what, is, what does that mean in terms of percentage? Sure, that's a great point. So you'd like to add in the percentage in addition to the milligram? How uh, can put that on a, on a poster? There, there's only so much room on a label to write stuff. Yeah. Um, we've been doing milligrams per milliliter since the very beginning. Um, it makes the most sense because you can look at a bottle that says 60 mils, it says 3 good milligrams per milliliter. Simple math says there's 180 milligrams of nicotine in there. Uh, percentage wise, you can, I think that it can be added on. I think information screens are, are on the web since everybody has it now. It's an excellent idea. For more information, go to here. But to, to add more things that are basically redundant removes uh, the ability to make these like this. The, the, the CCR stuff, I've been doing this for a long time, and it, it's sometimes difficult to get everything you want, on a, especially on a 30 mil model, to get a lot of information in there. And a lot of people do put. 2%, 20 milligrams of the milk. Can I ask you a stupid question, Mark? Just to uh, help me. Um, and I was thinking about it when I was taking Advil. Uh, you know, when they have the, the, the label on the top and then you can actually pull it back and it has a bunch of information about how I'm going to be constipated and all that really nice stuff. Um, how much would that be a challenge to put onto the 30 milligram or the 60 milligram? Uh, well, they, Hey, um, Charlie might have a great I don't know how, what kind of, if you guys are using Kiero, but I know at the last uh, CBE, there was a Kiero guy there, and he had those labels, um, and it would just be a matter of buying them. Once uh, the internal you. information on them, though, was pretty generic and not very useful. I thought it was a great idea, but I couldn't put my own information in, on the inside, so I kind of thought it was stupid after that. But if, if they actually, if they, if we could, or if Health Canada per se says this needs to be on a bottle, and, and so every single label had that in it, one, we're all automatically compliant as long as you buy the right label, and two, you you, you have that you have that information there, and it's correct, and it's what we want. I, I think also j j just to kind of keep in mind, do we have a problem with this? I don't know. That's, that's, right. So 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 so, cool. so I think the first call it is this is not an issue. This is a non issue. So proposal number two, to prevent consumers from being misled about the presence or the absence of nicotine, Health Canada proposes that any vaping product be considered to contain nicotine if nicotine present at concentration of 0.1 milligram per milliliter or higher. 100%, I'm in there. And one of the issues that, the reason that something like this has come up is because in the beginning, the beginning, back in the old days, when they did their first tests, they were basically getting those cigarettes. And the manufacturing process, if you're making those things, and there's still a tiny bit of nicotine in the line, a, a, a gas chromatograph is going to see it, right? So they were seeing small concentrations of nicotine and supposedly zero nicotine products. In our manufacturing process, that would be impossible because no nicotine is added to the bottles that are made in zero. So there, it would be literally impossible unless we, we received a flavoring that had nicotine in it, which again yeah. is not not very likely. So I, again, I have no problem with this. I think that all the stuff on the labels should be the stuff that I have a problem with some of the laws that were passed under the TBD, where I'm actually literally lying to customers when I pass an atomizer and it says this product contains nicotine. That's a lie. I'm committing fraud every time I sell one of those. And I'm doing it because the government's forcing us because they're just being lazy. They're not saying, the regulations aren't making sense. They're just, we need to warn people, slap this warning on there, it's good. And they're not saying, well, yes, we need to warn people, you shouldn't drink this stuff. Keep it away from your kids. Don't let your dog play fetch with a nick bottle. These are all common sense things to us, but they should be on the bottle, because sure. it's just like, the, don't use your hair dryer in the shower. They have to put that on the box just to make sure that the stupidest people the are protected, sure. and I got no problem protecting stupid people, but I do have a problem lying to customers. 
and, and I think that any regulation that we have must be true to it. So proposal two then is, again, that's a non-issue? Would point one be like the traces of nicotine? It, I'm, to be honest, it, it could be lower. I, I'm of the general philosophy you speak to proposal one. I said this at our last meeting. I don't think we should be handing anyone any can of worms for them to open on our behalf. Um, that that is a very achievable goal mm -hmm. yeah. from a uh, processing standpoint, yeah. production standpoint. Very easy to hit those marks. If it were me writing the regulation, I would suggest a much uh, lower threshold. Actually, that I said I'd put a zero point zero one. Yeah, yeah the, the, that would still be a manageable task. But at this level, uh, there's no need to. Also to, depends on, on like some manufacturing processes per gallon, right? So yes. if you're doing a batch, like a three mg batch, and you're filling. You know, if you're not purging correctly, that, that could be an issue if you're going to. Yeah. You know, like those concentrations, just from experience, we tested yep. it. That still would be an issue, but like I said, I think we should keep it. They gave us a very manageable Absolutely. goal. Absolutely. Let's keep it in the in my opinion. I agree. I think, I think look, we should be scrutinizing things where you know whether it's logical or not. And to me, when I read this, it, it's no different than saying when you buy those products and say, you buy um, uh, a banana yogurt, and on the back of the label it says it will say may contain traces yeah, of peanuts. peanuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's more of a it's it's more of a an insurance policy yeah. that you know under the very rare you know almost impossible circumstance that traces of peanuts end up in there, they can say well we place a warning there in case this should happen because we we can never assume that. A scenario that you know will like like that will never ever happen to us uh, ever. It uh, will a mislabeling issue. Right? Yeah, and it may. Exactly. All right. Uh, Health Canada proposes to require that vaping products that contain nicotine display warnings such as warning: this product can, contains nicotine. Nicotine is a highly addictive substance. Use of nicotine during pregnancy may not be the case. I think we're all good with this one too. Uh, in particular circumstances, and that that, Please that, that being. Uh, exactly what Lars was referring to. For example, Aspire lately has been putting these very same labels on the atomizers, and there is zero trace of nicotine in an empty tank that's coming off the production line and without even a coil inside it. Uh, I think we, there has to be a clear distinction for these labels where if there is nicotine, or like we just discussed previously, you know, even on a zero nick bottle, I agree that should probably still be on there. But as far as the, the hardware goes, uh, and sorry, as far as the zero goes, that might be a little debatable too. But I think the point is, is it's been it's been uh, taken a lot of people by surprise, especially the consumers when they see it. The first thing they do is they giggle when I hand them a tank that has that very uh, same label on it, because they know too it, it it's it's overkill, and I, I think. We have to find a, a, a fair uh, path to where things like this need to be applied. Sure. To put it on a mod, for example, on the box of a, of a, of a device is just silly. It's overkill. It's just just silly as fraud. Sorry, but the proposal doesn't, it just yeah. says products, products that contain yeah. nicotine, not that may contain nicotine. Yeah, but the, the, the only reason why I'm mentioning that, though, it, that's, you know, we have to even translate this stuff not just amongst ourselves, but the manufacturers need to be aware of it too. That's right? a great call out though. The, the, the manufacturers are doing it. You know, it's not if it's may or may not, or you know, do or don't. We're seeing this loosely. They, they hear about it and they're like, well, let's just play it safe and put it everywhere. And I think it should be expressed yeah. that some clarity should go in behind it sure. uh, as to how it's applied. Proposal <laughs> 4. Yes. Health Canada proposes to require that products that contain uh, vaping liquid display complete list of ingredients in descending order by weight. Agreed. Next. Um, so, so yeah. let's let's. I, I think this is one we, we should elaborate on. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, the ingredients of any juice are four main things, but I, I think we are factoring in the ingredients and flavor. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I was gonna say uh, that's highly debatable. I I mean. That's almost the equivalent of, uh, you know, caramel revealing the secret of how they get the caramel and the chocolate bar to a certain degree. Yeah. And I mean, you have to look at it this way. There's, uh, uh, I, I, I do believe it needs to be a little bit more specific than, you know, just saying or hey, uh, something a little bit more specific than just artificial flavoring, you know, for example. But uh, there could be. 
uh, things in behind that. Like, uh, you know, how many times have you guys had a customer that, that's come in and said, well, this has, uh, it's banana flavored and I have allergies to it. Should I make this or not? You know, even though it's artificial, you know, I never just say, oh, you're fine, go for it. You know what I mean? I generally tell people, well, diabetes is that uh, that's enough. That's, we get that one. We get that one all the time. So are you using fructose, sucrose, so I think, sucralose? What are you using? So the pain point issue number one is trade secret, right? So right. displaying the actual breakup. So yeah. could, could, could we? Could somebody identify? Thank you, sir. No, absolutely. Mine is the ingredients. Yeah. 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 The word ingredients in this proposal needs to be very explicitly defined. Precisely. Yes. Uh, exactly. I'm of the opinion that it should only list artificial and natural flavors. Yeah. If it does have an allergen or something, that's a, a different issue. Exactly. But even if you compare it to the, the relatively stringent pharmaceutical, my daughter is cough syrup medicine, mm -hmm. like yeah. apple flavor, it's a yeah. natural artificial flavor. And then and that's it. Yeah, yeah, so for the flavoring, I don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think we, they need to be individually itemized. But we because we, even uh, within the flavoring, there's, there's different ingredients. So, yeah. so that's like TBD. See, that's not an ingredient, right? that's a constituent. Like, yeah. Yes, yeah. kind of too vague, I think. Yeah. That's what, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm with Charlie, but that one. But sweeter versus the flows, right? Sweeter would be that would be its own ingredient. So, be, yeah. so, so one thing that you put there, Charlie, was ingredients should be clearly defined. But could you actually write down the whole artificial uh, that statement that you just made? Sure. I, I think that's a fantastic call. -out. And Maria, I think your call is very valid too. But the type of sweetener, maybe that that needs to be put in there also. Any other thoughts? Any other calls? Chai, actually, we're going to pause. You got to introduce yourself. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sorry. I'm here for the most part. Uh, I'm Chai. I own Dash Vapes. I'm a managing director of Canvas Vape Expo as well. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, so, so back to call outs. Are there any other call outs? Any other thing you can think of that could cause uh, a pain point that we should call out as a group on this proposal? I don't know how things are made. Like I don't understand the recipes part, so I apologize. If, I apologize for my ignorance. Um, would would it be misleading if someone looked at those ingredients by weight and think that they're getting a high VG product or a high PG That's product? So 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 as much as you don't know about manufacturing, you know the the actual customers view. Yeah. So, so, that's so I'm just kind of thinking program. if someone thinks that they're buying a high PG product. And it is because there's a lot more PG. Remember when I asked you guys about weight? Yeah. Um, if VG was listed first because it weighs more than PG, would someone be misguided to think they're getting a it's higher VG product? Yeah. The VG stands for uh, vegetable vegetable. 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 Okay. So this is where mine is, is that the consumer, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm bored and I have nothing to do, I'll read something and it doesn't matter what it is. Sure, so, sure, sure. So no, that, that's a great I'll point. expand upon that. I mean, operationally speaking, BG is about 25% heavier than PG. Yep. So as soon as you've got to a point where your ratio is 50-50, it, it would definitely be misleading. Yeah, and the truth, like, I have I have no clue because I'm not in retail. So I don't know if a customer comes in here yes. and they go back and they say, hey, well, the weight of VG, VG is more. Does this mean it's a higher VG product? That's a fantastic point. Yeah, because that should actually make that for the, for the most part, that is, I, I, I I don't know that that needs to be regulated yeah. as much because it's from a manufacturer's point of view, we put it on our balls because there's 50-50 yeah. is a selling point for some people as well as sure. ABG is a selling point for some people. So you, we we distinguish that one in our in our products when we sell them and and when we in our own labeling. Like I don't. I think know. it's fair to say, though, Lars, that that in the end, it still could be a pain point, right? Right, and, and so so. To, to a consumer, a consumer might come in and that still make a longer conversation or whatever it may be, which I think where, you know, the actual training of a store or how people get trained or, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a, a topic, a piece of it so, right? What so it is, kind of, is, is in a simple person's mind, so like me, I'm very simple when it comes to my e-liquid, it doesn't make sense. The two don't relate to me, where I don't understand weight and science behind making an e-liquid technically. So to me, you're telling me this is 50-50, but why is there more VG? I I have COPD, I can't use high VG. Like this has more VG. So I'm just saying is that there could be those issues and how do we solve yeah, them? Well, even if they were the same, one has to be the original. So, uh, so, so they, they, they don't actually specify the weight, they would not require that. Yeah, so that, that's where my opinion was. Maybe I was leaving in this, but 
as the, are they saying that we have to specify the weight of each ingredient? No, no, no they, they just have by order of so yes, yes, order of yes, yes. perhaps, yes. perhaps, yes. perhaps uh, the call out is that we don't like we don't like the lack of definition around the word ingredients and what that actually means, whether it's yeah. trade secret or otherwise. Yeah. And the other thing is we don't necessarily like the fact that we need to order it by weight, yeah. whereas if we did it by volume or percentage of the bottle, yeah. then it's a little bit more accurate and would we'll, we'll speak to Maria's point yeah. of do we, so, so, I, I know that's a solution. I know, I know. Let's write it down anyways, because okay. it's because we're gonna miss it. I'll just put that at the bottom of the page. Okay, so let's get on to proposal number five. Ooh, yes it is. So Health Canada proposes that manufacturers be required to report the information set outlined below. Um, so information frequency. You know what? I, I, I apologize. Yeah, I actually didn't get the whole chart. There was a chart. This is the chart. Yeah. Do you have the chart? Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, this here. So information. So this is a. There's a piece. Of, oh, it's actually written up. There, so it should be okay. Oh, it's the last. Yeah. Part, yeah. So the name of the business and the contact person. They want that to be sent out annually. Um, details about each vaping device are liquid, uh, including the product name, model number, and nicotine concentration. Upon the introduction of each product and annually thereafter. That's the time frame that they wanted. Upon introduction. Sorry, so, so, so this is all one. I, I'm really sorry. I should have. I think this is the only slide I've messed up, which isn't too bad. <laughs> so, so, so this is this is annually for all of us. De details about the big one. When each of those units is introduced and then annually thereafter. Got it. So what do they need to do? What does that mean? Yeah, that's again super vague. So, oh, product so product model 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 for model every single thing in my store, it's what you want. They want to know that it doesn't change anything. Like if you do have a revision, you would say For every that. skew that you carry. Yeah. So, so let's say, for example, you know, I got a flavor of juice. I keep the same flavor. If I tweak it next year, I'd have to go back to the same. So here's the thing with that, with the, the vaping products and the vaping liquids. So some shops import their own stuff. So would it be, because here it says the manufacturers, would it, so we would have to rely on our U.S. manufacturers and our So you have to be accountable to go back in before? And if they don't do it, it's non-compliant. Is there a place where the wholesaler or the importer has to do that? So, so the only thing that I can kind of uh, state that's something similar to this is if you look at the new FDA rules that just came out, so they had, um, so every, liquid bottle sold in the US, they had until the first week, uh, last week of September, yeah. go back and register all yeah. their products, right? And that was their, their data mm -hmm. If you miss that deadline, uh, now you have to go through a whole different <coughs> process to go back and register. So, so I don't think this is necessarily about the process no. itself. This is more about the actual requirement. What the process is, we don't know. Hopefully, we've had this opportunity. Hopefully, Mark can help us ensure that we get that opportunity to talk about the process uh, when that happens. But, but this is more about what the requirement is. So most of our stuff that's manufactured in China, it would be the Chinese manufacturer's responsibility. Well, we, we would be submitting it, but it would be their responsibility. To, to actually provide, provide information. information. And should they not, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. we, we, we won't be allowed in the country. Okay. Right. We have to report it on their behalf. Yeah, not on their behalf, we have to report on our behalf. I mean, it's our responsibility to... That would the health counter have a million... This, right. Exactly, this seems redundant. I think this would be a lot more efficient if this came from, like, a wholesaler. Or I don't believe they're sure. But I don't believe they're trying to get a, a set database. They're trying to have an idea of what each company is providing. Yes. They, they want to know how many people are... Who's right there, manufacturing. Manufacturing. Yeah, this is manufacturing. Yeah, exactly. I don't believe really this is... They say Pacific Smoke right. or, 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 or any wholesaler. Yeah. They, they did this. This is not on the wholesaler. And all the, the 15 or 20 different shops in one town that all sell, you know, alien kits. Sure, sure. They don't all have to submit. Yeah, they're asking the actual man for alien kits. So, 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 well, it, then Smoke wouldn't be able to sell them the can, I guess. We can't bring it. But I, I mean, I think that they were. <laughs> from experience, though, like, like even if you look at what's happening in the UK, they've had to submit a lot of documentation. The UK is a much bigger market than Canada. We're not sure. Single for sure, but, but I don't think any of So, again, I don't know. But my thought process would be I don't think anybody's willing to stop selling the can. Right? I don't think Smoke would say, and, and whoever does, you know, whoever decides to get out, 
if Aspire does it, then that to them, right? In but the end, Mark just said they won't be able to come into the country, correct? Right? Well, they're, they're, this, this is all this screams conformance. That's what they're looking for. And this, this for what it's conformance. Okay. So what they want is everybody in the world to conform to what they're talking about. So that that goes to your point, Lars, on some kind of a. They're going to have a template or a, a repository for that information. So if they got it, 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 it could be, but that's the way they want to do it. Well, couldn't we, you know, give them a better idea? Well, I think <laughs> it's, it's a proposal. You know, I mean, the solution is you're not Yeah, so, 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 Lars, if you have a solution there that you just mark it down on the post it, but let's try to refrain from solution. I know it's hard sometimes, but let's try to note it down. But let's try to stick to what the pain points are. So I think the pain point would be is just that you know this could be redundant yeah. for for yeah. for vendors, right? But remember too, uh, and I think this is an important point. Remember when when they did the uh, S five discussions, health candidates have been very well funded for this kind of stuff. Yes. So we got yes. to take that into account when we're going down these Yes. Tests. Retailers are not very well funded. For no, no, this. health candidates. I know, but I'm pointing out that retailers are not very well. Funded. Which, which is a pain point, though. Which is a great pain point to call out them. Really. Okay, just when I take at this, so from a logical standpoint, it sounds like to me that this is should be imposed at the manufacturing level. At the retail level, it's almost impossible. Well, the way that it it is right now, it does read as manufacturing. Right. So, so I, that, that's I, a part I mean, of that. to your point, what what you're saying, if someone can't conform or can't afford to, if this has a, a, a cost associated with it, that's when you're going to see massive consolidations. That's when you get five or six companies get together to form one company so they can play ball. At the end of the day, this is what we've all been waiting for. Tell us the rules so we can play this game, and hopefully we'll be able to afford to play it. And we, you know, try to make steps and put ourselves in a position where we can play the rules. Now, 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 based on what they're asking for is basically the point. So, so before we get there, let's let's jump oh, to sorry. to the next one. Details about so this is where I think Lars was getting to. Details about the design of each vaping device, including engineering drawings, which we were talking about about materials components used annually. So this is a call up. This is not really a pain point for anybody here, except for any hardware manufacturers. Now, not having a hardware manufacturer here and knowing that they are in Canada, what do you think the actual property protection so <coughs> intellectual yeah. property. that would be the We don't have somebody here in the room that is, Does but that I, I think it's important to try to work for them too. Would that actually be like be people make coils? It could be. Well, yeah, we built some. We've actually built boards for mods. Now, would that would that be considered a vaping device? Because on its own, the board is nothing more than a computer, right? And, and a computer is nothing until you do the job. So it's not a vaping device until it becomes one. So is that is, would that be included if, if it were not just vaping devices but components? Because it doesn't say components. Because what something like a like a coil again, right? Like yeah. if you're gonna make alien coils, is coils that gonna be uh, is that a is that a component <clears throat> or is that a device? Again, that's the vagueness in their their uh I think the part, sorry, one, but if I go to I, I think uh Bray the nail on the head because again you gotta have intel as to what their motivation is behind those kinds of sure. proposals. Cam H has been telling uh Health Canada that they wanna a set of reg in terms of what kind of coil is going to be allowed in one of these devices. And I think a lot of that's, uh, if you listen to Dr. Peter Selby, he's looking at a ceramic coil. So they've got some concerns at Camp H about some of the current coils. And so I think that, that's probably the motivation to have. Um, but, you know, one concern I had when I was reading this, uh, specifically to this prop, was the same one that you actually pointed out, which was um, the well, information on research and development activity. So, I, I'm confused on how, how would you go back and, yeah. and create a database on that. But again, they're asking to create a database. So my thought process is, if there's a database on research, I think that's great, right? What the actual process and what it's going to look like, those are the questions that it's, it, it's, it's kind of, it's really out of scope because we don't know enough yet to even go talk about it, nor could, could be solutioning. When we get into solutioning, I think it'd be great to brainstorm ideas that we can recommend on if you were to do this, you should look at it within this framework. But I think the issue is without actually understanding what the process of this is, it's kind of hard to really go back and really understand how you can go back and solve it. I think the only thing you could do is just, like I said, call out 
what's at risk and what the issues are. I, I could be wrong with that statement, you know, I think that's why we're all here. Proposal six. Um, Health Canada proposes that manufacturers of vacant products be required to provide supplementary information in a form, manner, and within the time frame specified once notified by the ministry. The form, manner, and time frame allowed by manufacturers to provide supplementary information would be specified in the request and could vary according to the nature of the information requested. Mark, could, could you kind of help us uh, on this one a little bit? Because yes. again, that goes back to the whole issue on conformance. This is not dissimilar to what happens with, uh, with new products being considered for uh, availability in the marketplace. The fear I would have on this is that it gets you into a situation where you look at notices of compliance, and uh, I, I just think that's a slippery slope. So you've got to be clear too uh, with this what they actually mean. So I'll go back to your point about being at the table. Got it. I think on the surface, Prop 6 looks fine. Yeah, the that's, gonna be that's yeah. what Mark's trying to Yeah, it's like, you can't supplement your information. But, but, but I think at the table, you know, being at the table, the important thing is, is it 30 days? Is it a year? Is it yeah. six months? Is it four months? What information would be important? Like, yeah. So if we're already proposing <coughs> five, suggest we have to give all our information. What would be supplementary if you're already giving the information? What if you ask for your tax documents? <laughs> Like how many times are you go in the bathroom? Like, like what is, what are they asking? But I think what they're doing is leaving the door open so to think of anything else, like they do when they write the regulations, they, saying for anything else that comes under the purview of the ministry. So they don't want to say it's just exclusively these things in case something else arises that they that hadn't arisen before that, so that they uh, they can ask for that extra information. And let's not forget that it, it, it they want a lot of information. Right. What's that? Because it's a new industry, what they're trying to do, and they've dealt with Sam Tam in the past, what Canada has, on trying to get number of devices, types of devices, blah, 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 because they're trying to get a handle on the size of the industry, which is still a mystery, right, to everybody. I think nobody in this room knows how big this industry is, how many players are. New stores are popping up all the time. New manufacturers are popping up all the time. You said yourself, you make a certain liquid for one customer. So, But it still exists in the market. But it exists, and their job is to make sure that Canadians are safe as possible. They have to try and gather as much information, and who are they going to look to except us, the people in the industry, to provide that information? One of the things we propose now, Canada, is sure you may want to put that up here on proposal six, is the establishment of a, of a council or a committee. The committee is based on uh, subject matter expertise, some from the industry and some from, uh, uh, from whomever else on Canada. But we have suggested that. Yep. Number seven. Health Canada proposes that manufacturers of vaping products be given a period of no more than 30 calendar days to address any deficiency in the reporting of information prescribed by the regulations once they are notified of the deficiency by Health Canada. Should the manufacturer fail to address the deficiency or should the information provided continue to be deficient, the sale of the product in question would be suspended until the missing information be submitted to Health Canada and the manufacturer will be informed. I'm going to relate this to cars. Sure. So this is sort of like a recall. Yeah. So some, a consumer's going to complain to Health Canada or whatever this group is yep. that I had this product and it made me sick. I'm, again, this is not sure. the same. Sure. We're talking about the this reporting. This is reporting. About reporting. So I, I sold you this efficiency. So, the so, so, reporting so, deficiency of the reporting. Report. So I'm okay, selling this sorry, juice okay. in your store, yeah. but my legal's wrong. So or, I, or missing so, information. Right. So how would Health Canada know that? It, no, it's 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 not, it's it's it sounds like if Health Canada says, hey, you didn't give us the ingredients on your flavor X, then you've got 30 days to give them to them, otherwise... No. Oh, then I guess so hold on. I think, it, I think so. it references points five and six. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, I think that's... I don't think 30, day, 30 days is too bad. No, um, well, foreign manufacturers might have an issue to meet the deadline. If, if, let's say, somebody from China submits a whole report, it takes their entire organization to compile the thing, they're missing a piece of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it depends on how. What, yeah. I think, hey, look, if we have an opportunity to call it in 30 days, is not enough time. Oh, sorry, that's the last one. 
No. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, this is it. Okay, lost some, okay, lost some translation myself. Uh, but I think if 30 days, if, if we have an opportunity to say maybe 30 days is, is too short of a time, you could call that as a pain point because if there's a variable inputs from different places. Actually, it's difficult to get if your product has an issue, but make it more complex. It gets pulled off the oh, shelves right? yeah. instead of being able to be sold until you fix the issue. So if you have 30 days to fix it and you don't fix it in 30 days, Everybody has to pull the product to the shop because there's something wrong with that product, which I think is, is actually more than enough that. Okay. Then we should also look at some uh, comparable best practices from other industries like oh, pharma or yeah. something else. Just so I know that it's a no brainer so that we're aligned with other major industries so we don't look like we're yeah. internally focused, but for sure. Yeah. That's a great point. So, proposal A. Health Canada proposes that manufacturers of baby products be required to maintain all records, documents, used to prepare their information uh, reports for a period of six, six years after, after the end of the year to which the document relates. This documentation would be able, would have to be kept, sorry, I gotta compare yeah. on my screen from this thing. Yeah, that's better. Kept in a form and a manner prescribed by the regulations so that it could be readily as, as, assessed, accessed, yeah. and viewed in Canadian Canada during audits. Wow. That was a tough one. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was a tough one. Okay, so so I think this again is relating to proposal five, six, and seven. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Pain. Documentation? Yeah. Storing storing documentation? If not allowed uh, in digital format, it'll cause that's the, yeah, it has to allow that. So that's a pain point. Pain point for sure. So so soft copy versus I think bankers boxes. So I'm okay with moving forward past eight, but it's up to you. As long as that's right. we raise our yeah. 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 The, the only other one that I thought of is where it says so that it could be easily readily accessed and viewed in Canada during August. It says manufacturers. I think about uh, uh, China or what? So then that would be more of a cloud. That may also be uh, some of the stuff we're putting in when we're not so yeah. we're on that hardware and anyway, it's a, yes, we what I'm thinking of is the liquid in these bubbles. Why would you be audited for smocks? Because a smock product exploded, they want to look for the back of the thing. If they're not readily, a, um, readily available, we're going to go back to proposal number five or six where you have that 30 days, then that product is off everybody's Which is a good shot. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 like, like to that point, and look, I can't believe I'm solution. <laughs> but, but but maybe part of that discussion, you know, down the road is maybe the CBA is is, is also putting together a repository for all the spenders. What are the things if you look at this proposal eight, seven, six, but if you look at what happened under the MMPR versus the MMAR, the medical marijuana and, and the marijuana medical purposes regulation, the industry wasn't even involved in those regulations. It was foisted on. Yeah. So you know, Daryl talks about this a lot where he says this industry at least has the opportunity well in advance to say, let's uh, put our imprimatur of this as an industry. So I, I like this, the, the fact that we're going down this path because when it comes to uh, sitting down at a table with those guys who are going to actually put pen to paper on the regulations, this industry can say this is part of the solution. But again, as it relates to this, we're telling you in advance, we didn't do this for marijuana, we're doing this in this industry. Sure. I think it's a, it's a really bold step forward on there. Because yeah. they, they've already said to the industry in, in uh, cannabis, you have to do this. And it puts lots and lots and lots of credit yeah, they did it all on the license. The other thing is, I'll just take this uh, the offshore hard drive. Right. Proposal nine. Health Canada proposes to establish regulations that would specify the conditions upon which manufacturers or retailers and others could use authorized relative risk statements baby promotions. The regulations would incorporate by reference a selection of authorized statements regarding the relative health risks of using baby products or comparing the potential health effects arising from the use of baby products relative to that of tobacco. As an authorized statement may need to be amended from time to time to keep up with scientific knowledge, these regulations would also set out the requirement for public consultations such as amendments. Dude, I get one of the ones that are really, really disturbed. Yes, um, I agree. Um, I concur. I, 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 
I think, think that, 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 that the reason for this law, but I think there's already a law in place, and that's why. If you can tell us, oh yeah, you should go this or you can go or you get caught, or you lose weight, that would be a lie. Right? So that would be, but so I would say, I 100% agree, you shouldn't be allowed to lie to customers. However, when they say you're only allowed to tell them what we tell you you're allowed to tell them, that causes me great fear because they are given a lot of this information. They're also way, way backdated in their information. Like I said, a lot of the, the, the regulators, they think that this is still a cartridge in a battery. It's not it's, yeah. for, for sure. It's and, 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 and it's kind of a double problem, problem right? right? It's, it's kind of like, th that's an easy thing to say if you knew for a fact that all 1,300 vendors in Canada are saying the exact same question. It's not, not what, what we're not allowed to say, it's, it's what, what other people, people are allowed to say. So, so you're looking at this proposal and it's all about what we are not allowed to say, but there is nothing there that states that, that cancer society, heart and stroke, yes. that, that some tobacco company can come around and say vaping kills people. Vaping is going to kill you. Vaping vaping going to kill you. you. So, so if you're, you're going, going to regulate what people said about vaping, 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 and are I'm not going to lie, this is my belief, Society, all those yes, they're doing great things, but they are there for profit. They need to make money to survive. They are raising funds. So if those are there for us, it needs to incorporate all statements around vaping. It can't be, it needs to be all statements around vaping. And if they're going to have a time requirement, they better make it every three weeks or every four weeks because, as you know, our industry and science changes. So let's be fair and you know, well, use I, one of those words, holistic. Mm -hmm. so, I, 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 I don't know why we have to, that's, those are opinion statements. And yeah. I think we have to be very crystal clear in this discussion, Mr. Chairman, about what the, the intent of these things are. Yeah. When the government is writing proposals for legislation or regulation, it's always written under this, remember, this is part of the Tobacco and E-Cigarette Act, and it's written as prohibition. So we have to be very clear on this. So when they say things in the act and in the regulation, it's written, you cannot do this. It doesn't say you can, it says you cannot do this. So if we understand the intent, the intent is all about prohibition. It's, it's exactly, it's always, when I say exactly, it doesn't mean I agree with this at all. But okay. They tend to uh, lean more towards uh, informing the risks rather than the benefits, typically. They, they, they would rather you say, uh, you, you know, they'd probably be more comfortable at say you say you telling somebody that this is also potentially harmful rather than it's much less harmful. Pharma is a perfect it, example. It's, exactly, it'll they, help like, you nobody, with this, but it's going to kill you. In 80 no, hours. nobody. They, they, they err on on the side of safety, right? And while we all know what how vaping makes us feel and the benefits that come from it, uh, it there's a lot of hypocrisy involved, right? Like now, do I when somebody comes in? and ask me, uh, is, is, is vaping bad for you? We don't, I, I can't stand it, I'm sorry, I'm, people are probably not gonna like me for this one, but I've been into a lot of vape shops, you know, where I'm either a customer or, you know, I'm just in browsing around to see what other stores are selling, and I hear employees referencing different values of percentage numbers. It drives me crazy. Oh, it's 90% less harmful. It's 97% less harmful. It's 93% less harmful. We don't do that. We just we just tell people that uh, it doesn't carry as many health risks as smoking a cigarette does. You know what I mean? At the end, the consumer is going to be the one to decide. But I agree that we should have the ability, when we are asked that question, to say uh, at least give the consumer a response, right? I mean, there's medical evidence. I mean, there's data. There's legitimate studies that have been conducted. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, we know what the short-term and long-term effects of smoking cigarettes are. And we know that in, you know, we, people seem to think vaping was invented yesterday, right? And we know to this day, there's never really been one documented death related, you know, related death because of vaping or some serious, uh, somebody who's got very, very ill from it all, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, to address this proposal, uh, uh, we should be able to uh, disclose, you know, at least allow the customer to provide them with information to let them know that it's not as harmful as smoking a cigarette. I, so, 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 Joe, those are good statements too. Again, 
if we go back to the motivation of the government, mm -hmm. the, and the best way to deal with this, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, is in, uh, in public policy parlance, what they say is they do this clause by clause. Sure. So they'll get around the table and they'll, they'll parse out each sentence as a clause. Yeah. So right now you've got the first clause is the first sentence. So they're proposing to establish regulations that specify the conditions. So I think we've got to be very clear. Yep. So they're, they're setting out for you what are the conditions that you can be authorized to give relative risk statements as a consequence of a big product that you're, you're, yourself. So we got to understand what that sentence means and what they're trying to say. So what they're saying right there is not we're telling you you can't do something. We're saying we're going to set the conditions under which you can under the prohibition that we set in the act. So I think we've got to be very clear. So we, we would do well to spend time going through each clause sure, sure. and then deciding what they mean. And so everybody okay with that? I actually have a question after. And if I could, and if I could based on that, what the motivation is. Again, if you look at what the government has been saying, because we were very clear as a CBA when we went and, and, uh, and lobbied the, the senators and when we went and lobbied Health Canada directly on this to say to them, are you going to put us in a position where we have a lexicon? Because if you put us in a position where we have a lexicon, if new words come based on science catching up, then we got a problem. So we got we to be very clear about the conditions under which they're they're putting us because if we can't that goes to your point joe we can't put ourselves in a position to give any advice right now because you're not qualified correct so we got to be we got to put ourselves in a position based on that to, a how do we get qualified now we're talking about certification and b what can we say so this that, sounds like a money graph for the government. So for it me, is not a money graph. They're, they're they're not, money it's graph. not a money graph. I'm telling you how it sounds. I, I know, but we have got to understand. I, I said that point about prohibition. As long as we understand that, that's the motivation that we're covering. We've got a hundred years, not ten years, a hundred years, especially uh, since 1965, where they said that smoking is bad. Mm -hmm. So you have now remedies from. Uh, the United States and from and in Canada and the UK and other places in Europe where there are billions of dollars that have been paid by tobacco to governments to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. So we're not coming at this saying, well, we've got a right to do this. We're coming at this well behind the eight ball. So we have to be smarter than them based on, on what they're putting forward. And the thing is, those regulations came about because of the science and because of the harms. Correct. Instead of saying, we think it might be harmful, because like I was saying before, you cannot prove a negative. You can't prove that it's safe. Also can't you can only that's prove that it is harmful. That's all that they can do. Large, you're absolutely correct. Again, and I think this, this is a good debate because let's look at what the minister said. We were the ones. CBA said science is catching up with baby. Those are our words. And what did the minister do in November when she uh, launched the uh, S5? She oh, ripped us off. Yeah. She, she said science is catching up with baby. That's why we've been very successful to say to not only the government of Canada in the, in the act, but provincial governments to have mandatory two-year reviews based on this. So you're right when you're saying what you're saying, but we've got to be, we've got to be a lot smarter than them to get that into the, into the act and then to propose in the regulation what we can or can't do. Okay, well, Mark, you've had 18 meetings since this started up there with like tons more than 18 people. What is your gut instinct, your 30 years here, is what is their goal out of proposal mm -hmm. line? So if we go by your gut and your expertise, because we're being, paying you, you're working for us for those yeah. those skills that none of us in this room and no one in the industry has. Sure. So what is your gut instinct on proposal line? So, so if we go through, that, that's a very good question. So go through uh, uh, clause number one. Yeah. What they're saying is we want to put down on a piece of paper what we can, what we establish as the conditions under which you could, as a as a retailer, under which you could talk about relative risk statements. Yeah, so, so, so another so question for you. What so, 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 is that like stating, if I'm a retailer or manufacturer, and I want to be able to say this comment, I need to fall within a certain bracket of 
qualification? Well, no, it could be, it could be, it could be something as simple as, and, and this is just a, an example, a condition, a, a condition where you can talk about it might be only if, if it's asked of you. Like, for example, they, they may say, if a customer asks you this particular question, is it more, you know, is vaping yeah, so safe or not? Or the condition could be, it has to be within the confines yes. of no, your right. right. It could be within the, the, in the confinement of it's your about situation. Well, yeah. the condition. So you yeah, the situation. Okay. So, the situation. So what I was going to say is, this goes back to making sure that you don't have any health things associated with the product you're selling, which this avoids. I, I don't see a problem with the, the terminology here because as it is, we can't have any health claims, otherwise the products fall under a different category, or right. we can't sell at all. Exactly. Yeah. The thing, there's a huge difference between a health claim and somebody says, is this safe for the smoking? That's and a health claim. Pardon? That is a health claim. The there, there's there's absolutely, absolutely there's absolutely no there's I would have absolutely no qualms with saying to the, you telling you somebody that yes I, I believe that this is much safer. Than smoking. Me and you may yeah, believe and, that. And, 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 and again, and we if you say yeah. that you're not allowed to say something until we say it's it's okay, that is I think that's backwards. It should be the other way around. You're not allowed to say things once we find out that that's not true. I disagree because. For us, if we're putting health claims towards these products, they're a health product that has to be prescribed by a doctor. Yeah. So say someone if, comes into the shop if and you want to get the health claim, perfect. Let a doctor prescribe the products and sell it that way. But until that happens, yeah. it's a, it's a whatever, whatever they call it, it's not a health claim. I couldn't, large, I couldn't agree more. That's the point. What yeah. should I say? Because we have, we've been asked, we've been fighting this with governments across the country who have, who have brought in their attorneys general into meetings to say, we should have this under uh, health products. You need a notice of compliance for this product, this health product. Uh, you want to spend a billion dollars to get this, uh, 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 get a notice of compliance on that, have at it. That's if you want to go down the path you're saying on health. This is, this is a very prescribed industry right now. We have been given the opportunity to say this is a consumer product or it's a health care product. So you, were, you use words like safer, uh, well, healthier, uh, that's why well, that goes under us. Yeah, right. right. okay. we've, we've been saying, we've been saying right from the start too, Mr. Chairman, that words matter. Yeah, very, you know, very, very right. respectfully, respectfully to your opinion is, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, or I, or Shy, or anybody at this table, and how great vaping has made us feel. You, me, my staff, and everybody in this damn room, and every, most everyone in this industry is not qualified at any level or any degree to make a statement that this is is okay for you all medically. It's it's just we're not qualified. I'm not a doctor. I can't prescribe medication. I can tell you that, hey, when I have a headache, Advil works, but if they say to me, but is this really what I need to help my problem? I can't say it is because I in that because I'm not a doctor. But they want to avoid well, that's a great point. Well, put you in a position where you're offering advice based on what you can or can't say that offers benefit. Is this a written or prohibition for everyone? So, so we have to be we have to be very, very clear on this about how how you put yourself in a position because you can say there's a benefit to vaping. That's a, that's that is a that would be a prohibited statement. There's tons yeah. of stores that advertise. That's what you would do. It would be a prohibited statement. statement. Because no, if if you want to do that, you have to go through the correct channel exactly. to become a small cessation product. So, yeah, just that. Yeah. Which our, yeah. our old taglines were about the benefits of vaping: no smoke, no tar. We didn't say these are your benefits. We just said no smoke, yeah. no tar, no snake. Those are benefits. Like if someone asked, it, it is a benefit. It might not serve snake anymore. But if you're right? right? the flavor of Or we could say it's less harmful because it doesn't have it. It's a linguistic. If I may. It's semantic. If, if I may, the, the, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, about this proposal, it, none of it is suggesting that we can't talk about, uh, answer a consumer when they ask us that question. But it's how we deliver that message. Because whether we like it or not, <clears throat> There is a, a risk yeah, to vaping. Sure. Period. Yeah. Nobody can make a claim. For sure. Right. So because there is a potential yeah. health risk with vaping, I know people don't like hearing that, but there, there is. It's it, it, there it's is. Not yeah. Oxygen. It's not. It, it, it's not 100% harmless. We can't make that claim. So the question is, how do we explain to somebody what this is getting at, or what are the conditions in which we can 
uh, explain to a customer that it's not harmless, but there is a, still a risk to it. We can't allude to that. I think this is really important. This, is, this goes down the path of accreditation This first clause helps the, the best in class yeah. retailers because what they'll start to do is they'll start to frame it. Because everything that you told me in your opening plan, I'll tell you, you're not a clinician and I don't care. Right? Everything you okay. told me, I can't trust you because you're not a clinician. I used to say that all the time. Listen, listen, I'm just a dude in a flea market trying to sell something. Don't listen to me. Look it up online. You'll see 500 okay. people telling okay. you the exact yeah. same thing. The Dr. And Google is the worst place to go. I think I'm dying of, of brain aneurysms every 10 minutes, right? But what the, what the first clause says is that we should agree that Health Canada will start building a path to a new industry yep. to start to frame what we can start to say. And then we can build on it as the science comes. That's why when Beijing and Mark first went into the province of Ontario, long before S5, long before Canada started to look at this at like this substantive uh, measure, is they went in and they said accreditation and certification is the first part of how this comes. Right? This is the first it was, it, was, it was one of the first things well, that you see that. that. Right. So I think when you hear when you're coming, yeah, yeah, it's yeah when you're building your statements right through our responses because that's what we're charged here from the member or from the membership and from post to post asking us to do is that what are the preconditions of the who can say what and that right it's it's, 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 it's who can say what and then and start and building a narrative and uh, and I don't know if anyone's heard me and if I've said it too many times please feel free. Um, Vaping has come in, in, in five to six years, where it took cannabis 100 years to get to. In terms of health claims, in terms of helping with cannabis, or uh, with, with arthritis, the amazing effects of CBD, everything else. Vaping took that, it's seizures. Vaping took that whole narrative, and they, 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 they're at the seat for five years. years. It's, a, it's an incredible feat. So take, we have to kind of get off this government's out to screw us, to say, wow, this is going to be big. This is an unprecedented opportunity. Let's take another 10 years or 15 years when you're looking at a global sense of a country, which is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, and say, let's just get it right. Just because we got it wrong with, with tobacco doesn't mean we have to get it wrong this time. Right? And, and that's what If I could, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Chairman, this, this is, that's a very important point because one of the things we can do, uh, first, we, we asked the government, and they said yes, that they would have a uh, a period where the act would be reviewed from time to time, right? But the yeah. regulations can be reviewed anytime. Because they're done by order of council, not by order of the act being open. So I think that's a smarter play that you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'd say I say clause one is absolutely uh, I think what clause one would have to it goes and not to solution uh, but it's uh, it's a really good solution. Right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I will. I don't want to lose it. it. It's we've already used it before. Is that that's the whole point of uh, of the committees is to start to build yes. on that narrative over the um, industry of which we we want to participate in uh, forever. The government is forever. This industry has now become forever. Okay, like I like I was saying before, my main concern is that there are studies already now, and the way that the act is written. Pardon? The time. Yeah. It, it, okay. It, it, well, for for the, I know we you don't like, but the, the the British College of Physicians have that study where they did rel they did a relative risk assessment, and and the way the act is written, to point somebody to that act or to point somebody to that would be illegal. And, and that's what that's what happens. No, 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 that's not true. No, no, that's not true. That's no, no. That's not true. But, but, but I, I think it's important that we make this distinction too. If you look at the references in the uh, in Health Canada's. Uh, licitation for these proposals, they didn't even reference the UK uh, Royal College of Physicians. They didn't reference it. And that's a troubling issue for us. So it's an opportunity. And that, that that's a challenge. Challenge. Yeah, that's good. And it, we, we should be putting some kind of reference to that yeah. in our uh, in yeah. our statement on the 27th. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah. So they didn't even. So, so part of this whole thing, you know, it wasn't even available. So we called that out uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, before. Any of this actually started coming together, saying there is data there, weren't they looking at? Or you know, maybe maybe, maybe the argument is the sample size is too small. Yeah, and that would be because you play you play a challenging game. What I do is I, I sit at the end of the table because I've had the, the opportunity to work in those environments before, and I kick the shit out of the team. And, and I want to, I just, just want to add something, and I'm only saying this because it's being recorded. Okay, uh, is 
it, it's relevant in a way though. Uh, there are a lot of people that are, are very, very out there. All the, all the masses, our customers, people in all the groups, they're extremely passionate about this, but a lot of people don't understand uh, how this is, how the game of politics works. You have to go through a process. And whether we like it or not, it, everything, everything that's allowed in Canada uh, it is not a right, it's a privilege. And we, you know, it, it is. It, uh, the same way, uh, and one perfect example, my, my, uh, ex-wife, <laughs> she used to work for the MTO, and people with medical conditions from, you know, doctors would send in reports to the MTO, and she would basically decide if you're fit to drive or not. And people would call in and say, you're this is a violation of my rights, and the, the response is, you don't have a right to drive, it's a privilege. And for us in the industry of baby who are selling products to consumers, None of this is a right. It's a privilege. Was all, of, uh, it's, it's, all, all of this is a privilege. Now, 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 I will be the first guy to say it's, it has changed my life. It, it, I feel like I've uh, reduced a lot of risks that I was doing while I was smoking cigarettes. I will preach it to my closest family members. But when it comes to the business consumer side of things, I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't, it share that same experience that I do with a close friend that I do with a, with a customer, okay? And people have to learn and understand, uh, and this is to all the masses out there, is that uh, I, I had a discussion once with Sam Tan. Uh, I said, look, no matter how we come out of this, we, you know, uh, we're, this is all for a purpose, so that we could give, we, we can consult and, and, and help shape this over time. It's not gonna happen overnight, where, we get a, 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 as fair of an opportunity to conduct business fairly and, and to do things right. And no matter how we come out, I guarantee you, people, that, there's going to be people out there that are going to throw stones at this organization, CBA, at uh, whoever. And when, the, let's say we fast forward to the end, and we're done, all the regulations are in place, I promise you, people are still going to hate or put blame on CBA or ECTA or whoever it is because they're going to say you didn't give up, you didn't you guys didn't fight hard enough but we're we're not going to be untouched we, we have to work within a framework and I'm glad that the government because it could have gone that way they could have said you're done see you later you're we're not even we're we're, we're we're so lucky that we're sit, we're at this table because the government is giving us an audience to to be able to get in on this process, right? So it's not a question about uh, what you believe in or what I believe in on you know what I can say or this and that. It's a question of how can we get that same message across in a way that we're, that is acceptable in accordance with the government where they don't say, well, you can't say anything at all then, screw you. Mark, yeah. this is a question I have for you. How, how has the government actually gone back and defined vaping? Uh, how do you mean defined it? Yeah, so, 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 so have they defined vaping as smoking? Um, that's a very good question. Because we're under the Act, we're, um, we're an alternative to smoking, which is a very interesting choice of words. But, and that's a, that's a, I think intuitively I'd say to you, it's how we uh, put our, portray ourselves or establish trust with government in order for them to, to maneuver in the Act Mm -hmm. Some amendments and then the regulations versus uh, tobacco. Maybe this kind of relates to the wordings too, right? Very much. So. This, is, this, is where, like, this is where it gets very complicated and cream. I gotta, I gotta say this again too. None of you have been in this situation, but I have. When you sit with the director general and, and we're saying we want this amendment, and she'll say, "This is one of the Susan and Tom, and She'll say, "Are you sure you want to put it there?" She won't. She won't tell you the answer. Are you sure you want to put it there? And then we just so it's okay to so go through the logic. If we put it here, that means it impacts positively on tobacco, which would impact negatively on us, if you follow my logic. Right? So we said, oh yeah, okay, we'll put it under that section. We'll put it under section five because it's only for vaping. So that's the kind of trade-off you had to do when you were going down the amendment path. Okay. On the regulations, we have to be careful in the same way that every time, because if you look at, 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 uh, at clause number two, Relative to that of a tobacco product, and I think that's that's where the discussion is now. We're right, so we have to be very careful when we're looking at that because we could get into a situation where we put ourselves in a box 
uh, apropos of what you were saying, and what you're saying, Joe, about a lexicon that just gets, that puts us out of this game. So, but have, have they defined it as smoking? No, no, no. It's, I think it's defined as a subsection yeah. of the tobacco act. But we're just talking, this so is all federal. So, yeah. Yeah. so within the tobacco act, you have tobacco products expressing so labeled. It, so for example products. then, if someone has stopped smoking, because they are vaping, they're considered smoke-free based on their past body. Oh, oh, no. So then they haven't defined it. Well, if you consider it again. So this goes, is where I'm trying to figure it, it out. It goes to lexicon, right? Yeah. If you yeah. say smoke-free, that falls under the uh, auspices of nicotine replacement therapy. Yeah. So it will be under a health product. So you can't, you gotta be very careful. Okay, so That's so their smoke-free is the word for smoke a health Smoke-free, quitting, cessation, any of those words. Stop. Stop, yeah. We are we have alternative alternative. Yeah. So what adjectives So why do you want to look at that box? Because it says it's a smoking cessation product. It's just a freaking battery. That's all it is. That's stupid. So <laughs> it was stupid because Aspire and Nautilus aren't the smoking product. See, that, they, 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 yeah. they would say that because yeah. they, they think, oh, but it sounds beneficial, it sounds more healthy, it sounds like they would want this in there. No, just put so, back. So my question is, so for example, our promotion right now is called Start Your Journey in the Switch. Is that something that would be allowed to continue to be? Switching um, is... It, it doesn't say make the switch from... No, I'm going to give you a, a, yeah. a lesson, again, in how you establish trust. Yeah. The word switch yeah. is linked directly to tobacco. Okay. So you use switch, they're going to think you're tobacco. So, so if you need to just start your journey. Start your journey is fine. Your journey we, we you're start. not making a reference. Saying start your journey is one way yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. not making a reference to something. I have to. I have to. I have we to. say come in and have a conversation about vaping with us. And we talk yeah, about vaping. That, that's fine because you're not making the reference. You're not making the reference. Yeah, we are adding subtitles and taglines. The most I've heard from Sorza, like from just floating around, and is this is an alternative. The end, so, so I think this is important, Mr. Chairman. If you look at what uh, the, the Health Canada says, the trickle down here to the provinces, right? So they use, the, they call it the end game. The end game is to contain tobacco. Contain. So, so get rid of it. So by 2035, we joined other countries that said we're going uh, to whittle down the use of tobacco to 95% uh, what it is now, mm -hmm. to contain it. So they want to go after tobacco. So we got to be very, very clear as, a, as an industry on how we want to position ourselves to garner trust when we're doing these kinds of things to get their attention. So the use of the word switch has always been uh, uh, attributed to tobacco. You have to move away as far as yeah. tobacco. We have said, we have said, right from the start, that we are an alternative to smoking. So that, we've always made that claim. So we never said that we're, uh, and we've never used the word tobacco. We've always used smoking. You have to be very, very clear on the choice so of So something like this would pass. I'll show you guys Yes. Yeah? Yes. So we have an ad that's going on uh, the subway. The, the starter kit. Like this that? And all it says is alternative to smoking, free right. starter kit. So it, it really does communicate that, okay, you know, this is a product that will help you stop smoking without actually saying it's a product that will help you stop smoking. But it, Mark, I think you make a great point, because that's one of the things that I thought of when it comes to starter kit. Right? So you get down, we start talking about youth, you start talking about everything else. That's, okay. that's, that's a start. Okay. As opposed to a conversion kit. A conversion kit. Conversion. They're free conversion. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so conversion is like the way. Conversion again. It's the same. So it's tough, right? It's but the way these products are defined, they're defined as a starter kit. Like that's the category. So of the we define yeah, so that. You define that. Say something like it's stop smoking and start vaping. That would be bad. Uh, bad. Cool. Say that again. That's bad. Because you stop, stop smoking, start vaping. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's not even your lexicon. Stop smoking is the lexicon of energy. You're going after when you say that. You're. What if it was the other way around? What if somebody said stop vaping and start smoking? Start, start you're you're you, you're going to feel yeah. like you're being attacked, right? So well, yeah, because they already seen that. Are. Start vaping and start smoking. That's what it that's scary. That's what it's called. What? None of us are going to be qualified to be the advice. 
on paper. None sure. Of yeah, yeah, so that's what sort of, agree. I think everybody agrees. If somebody in here has a, uh, a degree, or excuse me, uh, a certificate in smoking cessation, that's a profession. Those but are, even then, you still not be qualified because you need to do studies on, to, to on prove vaping. that. And to, that's a very good point because we've had that discussion. I think Sean, you've been there. Daryl, you've been there. With Peter Salvi at Cam Aids, who said, "I haven't. We haven't done a definitive study in Canada yet on a qualified group of people on vaping." So they, we, we, the industry's not old enough to have that yet. This is what we're up against here, right? Mm -hmm. we, we we don't know anything. Yeah. If you listen to even Eric Hoskins the other day, he said. I generate in this province five billion dollars a year from smoke tobacco product. The, the HST or the, the tax that they mm -hmm. put up. Says, yeah, it's five billion dollars a year, but it costs me twelve and a half billion in in uh, in healthcare costs associated with smoke. So he's making the distinction that look at this is I, I'm spending more on people who smoke than I'm getting from the taxes that I collect. On. So that, that to me says there, there's the there's the rub when these guys are coming up with that company. So we got to be doing clear defined walls, right? Correct. Okay. So 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 going back to proposal nine. So that was the second statement, right? Um, are there any other thoughts on the second statement? Do do we all agree? Are, are we all in agreement with the separation that needs to be created? So if I, if I could, because I think we got to, I want everybody to put their head around uh, for that second clause, the solution goes back to Daryl's point about we have to we have to rethink long and hard over what that solution is. Because remember, it says it would incorporate by reference. So when you look at re that references, that, that's, we, that means we can't, because the word reference means you must be qualified. And that, well, that's, that, that's the problem right there, that whole, that whole proposal there, when I read it, tells me that in a roundabout way, they're they're basically saying you can't even do any of this unless you're qualified. Correct. And, right. and so, what is that? I think the real question out of this proposal is: is what, makes what is it, what, what what would be considered the appropriate qualification, mm -hmm. and, and 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 you know how how would we go about getting that? What is the proper that's qualification? That's 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 I don't think it needs to be defined. No, it doesn't. No, okay. 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 Of authorized statements regarding. So, how, aren't it, doesn't one say we're going to come up with the uh, regulations? So, I mean, sorry, the ref, the statements. Number two is saying here are the here here's what we came up with in number one. Reference this. These are the statements you can use. So, in the bill that is defined separately, whether it's a consumer product or a health yeah. product. So yeah. If you want to become a health product and make any claim you want. You're more than welcome to go through the process of becoming a health product and spending the money to do so, so if I were, and then you can make the claims you want to make. If I was a retailer, oh, actually I am a retailer, <laughs> um, and I carried NRT products in my store, I could make health claims on the NRT products, the Nicorettes, whatever, yes. but then I wouldn't be able to say anything on Unless you go through that approval process. Yeah. 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 Yes. Unless Terrible. the manufacturer. Well, even then you can't, you can't sell NRT over the counter, behind the counter, yeah. unless you're qualified. Yeah. In, in nicotine replacement therapy. Really? Well, no, 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 this is what I'm saying. This place, so there's there's the over the counter and then there's behind the counter. So like so the is, yes. Yeah. So you gotta be careful on No, I'm just trying to make so you want gums or you want yeah. the stuff that you can get. And then I can say whatever on the gums, yeah. but I can't say anything on the You can sell it. Yeah. I'm just saying and to give to give advice on that, you're not qualified. Even on the NRT side. Yeah, Charlie, you were trying to say something. For a long time. I'm not, I'm not talking about <laughs> it, but I might not even be relevant. Just that. It's important to keep in mind that, again, like what Mark said earlier, this is a, uh, it's a prohibited, a prohibited uh, document prescribed for the cancer. They are specifying conditions in which we can. So take into account we can't say any relevant health claim whatsoever. We can't which is, promote, which is also we haven't even about it. The definition of promotion is a very specific thing. <coughs> answering someone's direct question, as long as your intent in answering it is not to balance one over the other. If you just want to say, there are studies that have been conducted by the University of Windsor, please feel free to review them. If you say, please feel free to review them, I see you will find that they prove that everything we're doing here is safer, that's the problem. You can definitely reference a document. You can still reference that a term reduction, too. 
I, that would be the general topic, but you can't presuppose any uh, conclusion, even sure. conclusion of God itself. Now, the final thing, is, or not the final thing, but yes, you cannot make relative health claims, you can't compare it to tobacco products, but they are giving you conditions in which now you could. So nobody can, but no reference to qualifications, but there would be conditions. We don't know what they are at this point. That's where that's where that's where you can that's, that's where that's 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 there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I originally drew a box, I turned it into a kite. So but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I had a box containing statements that were oh, no, approved. No, 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 that's what this is saying. Yeah. There are certain statements. Which is, so the question the question is though, and, and specifically to you, is in the first one though, when it says uh, retailers and others, and starting from there, could use authorized relative risk statements and maybe product promotions. What are those? What are, what, how do we find out what the authorized things okay, are? So, so Where does that come from? They're going to set a syllabus here. So in, in clause number one, for me, they're saying, here are the conditions. Right. Well, I'm not even worried about that part of that clause okay. because it, it, it cascades that. The second one is, is then when we start to frame what that box looks like. Right? Okay. That's the second clause. The third, the third clause is important. It's the most important one because I got to tell you, Mr. Chairman, that I think that's a, that's a, 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 they threw that as a victory to CBA for what we've been talking about with respect to a committee or a council yep. that we would have that would look at keeping up with scientific knowledge. Because we said to them, and again, it was back to the minister, who's the government, saying, uh, we think that science is kept up their paper. So she's made that call. So she's lit, she's, what's the word, she's committed the government to that process going forward. Yep. So we look at ourselves, set out the requirements for those kinds of things with public consultation, that's mm -hmm. the sop to us for that. But which is large to your point. If tomorrow they go back and they say, hey, we acknowledge the study that was done in the UK, that is now a fair game statement for everybody. Correct. So, so I think to Mark's point, the win is, yes, we made, well, the CBA is before my time, has made suggestions about going back creating this committee, and from everything that we see what's happening, is this committee will exist. Um, yeah. you know, and, and hopefully if we go back and, again, do the right things and put our right step forward, this committee will exist and the CBA would be in that committee. And as your, cert as your certification and accreditation programs grow nationally, the, the, the volume of statements that you're going to be able to use and that you've used before starts to grow. Correct. You're doing it in partnership with government and Correct. you're doing it in partnership with the committees. So you don't think about it as day one to, to day 15, it's year one, year two, year three as the body starts to, to grow and bringing the evidence, the scientific evidence as it grows. It, it's really creating a uh, It legitimizes the industry. Yeah, and it allows the industry to, to advance on this trajectory that it's on today, which is rent. And I think too, Mr. Chair, I think this is good because you get the opportunity on Monday to meet with the director general yourself yes, and, and the minister's office and members of PESA to say to them, we had this debate around the table today. This is what we do. We agree with everything Charlie said. <laughs> well, I think I think that makes this this because I think they really want to hear from us, which is why they asked us to do this. Sure. They want to hear from us. What is our proposal for that third clause? So we've kind of openly discussed this proposal quite a bit, but I haven't really heard any pushback. Well, we've heard pushbacks and issues going back and forth. I just kind of want to gauge where is everybody's. Headspace out right now. Uh, the only thing is, it is uh, it's like, it's, like I said, is the right now what we're allowed to say is zero, and well, again that will grow. Zero, and we I'm just going to say, oh well. Yeah, technically nothing. I, I yeah. think we should just yeah. figure out what, what we're allowed to say. Is, what we're allowed to say is is a, is going to be a list, okay. and no, that's no, no, the list there's no list right now. Yeah. So the list of things we're allowed, allowed to say is is right here. Like let's say in the beginning, nothing. They define it and they're like, you can't say anything. You can't even say that it's an alternative, or you can't say that it's less harmful. You can't, you can't say anything. But they did want that, if you remember. No, no, yeah. I, I know. I'm just saying, like, the way it's written now, that's also a possibility that they're going to come out and say exactly that. So I think what the concern you can already hear is that make sure that when it does go into effect, that it's not a blanket. Yeah. of what you can say, and there's things that you can say that are not true. No, that's a very good point, and, and, and I think this this point that, that Shai's making yeah. speaks, uh, Mr. Chairman, to trust. Yeah, no, they absolutely. have trust in this organization that we are going down this path, like you are saying, on some kind of uh, quality assurance vis-a-vis -vis, uh, 
uh, right, um, certification, sure. and uh, that the industry is putting itself under certain commitments or submission to uh, a set of standards of uh, accreditation, that gives them a lot of trust. So where, where, where does the, the I, I'm, I'm going to tag on to Shai, that's what I was alluding to before. I know you said that it's the third one that's, and it does, it, it is more important, but I'd still like to know What's where does, where does, who is, how is, where does the authorized relative risk statements come from? Who's going to outline what those are? And who's going to decide which of those are acceptable? Or like, who gets to filter that's them what down? That's why they say establish, though. It's right in the open. Establish, right? So, but, but where we're we're gonna, who's right? going to be, is it going to be us? Is it going to be this? No, is it going no, to be no, no, no. Canada. No, so that's what I'm saying, though. Canada. I know it's Health Canada, but what I'm saying, what I'm asking is, is are, do we, Again, I, and I agree, none of us are certified at all, whatsoever. Yeah. But are we going to be a part of that process? Yes. yes. Okay. That, that's, yes. That's, yes. That's, that's the thing. Concern. That's the thing. Like, I, I just like to know, that's are right. we going to be sitting yeah. down with them at that time Absolutely. when when but when we're going that's through That's a whole lot of other states. He needs your chairman of government. Yeah. So he's yeah. going to have tons and tons of That's, that's <clears> the whole plan. So, so the plan is, this is an exercise to go back and prove that one, we can get a collective voice. Mm -hmm. okay. Two, we can go to these officials and say, hey, we can put this process together. Can we have a seat? Right. Are there going to be. Can we talk? Oh, have I seat disagree with that. Are Pardon? these kind of proposals and all this stuff and all. Is there a threshold that CVA has? Is there a, a line drawn? There's no baseline. No. Hold on a second. There's a second half to it. Okay. Um, a line drawn saying that, you know what, we need to get at least this to know that we're working with the government and here are our lines. Like, here's where we're not going to budge. Like, where is that threshold or that line drawn for CVA and its membership? Actually, for the CVA membership, to be clear. Okay. So, um, so, say this proposal comes back and says, you know what, we're not ready to put a single statement out there. You guys can't make anything right now. Just say that it's for now. Technically they can. Technically they can. Is that going to be, uh, okay, you know what, no, that's wrong. But that goes back to what they were saying, yeah. the, the, the process and the government. But <laughs> where? But not everybody's going to have so, that. So if I could know, right, because this is, this is the age-old problem, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and I think, first of all, they are not. And I'm saying Health Canada, the government of Canada, the Senate of Canada, all of the, uh, 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 any industry that's associated with uh, the, the plan to mitigate tobacco use, anything that's associated with tobacco use in this country. Okay? Mm -hmm. The World Health Organization, the FDA. Yeah, I, got, yeah. Okay, I, need, I need you to understand the enormity of this. Okay? Yeah. So if you understand the enormity of what we're talking about, and then your comments, I, I'm not criticizing your comments, I just want to point out the fact that what what you're suggesting is that there's, there's, a, a, there's an opportunity for us to say we're going to push back. And I'm saying to you, we don't have that luxury. But if yeah. you're working together, constructive criticism is not pushing back. That's it's working not together. constructive criticism, it's trust. They got to know that they have one organization that they can deal with that says to the, to the country, to its industry, here's what we're going to commit, here's what we're going to submit to. Okay, yeah. but what I'm trying to say is me, as your membership, need to know that you would not be satisfied and would do something to ensure that at least when it comes to certain proposals on this one, so, if they give us a blank list so, of statements, exactly. I want to know that you guys are going to call it fighting, call it constructive criticism, call it building a bigger trust to make sure there's like a statement on that list. So Maria, again, we said right at the start, Yeah. right at the start, you're a member of this organization, you were at that first meeting, you said, we will work with you. Do you remember that? We will work with you. We've also said a lot of things. We Life will changes. work with you. That's what we said. Yes. We will work with you. Which is why they have a, a very close relationship with CBA. I'm not talking about Health Canada. I'm not talking about the government of Canada. I'm talking about the provincial governments across this country who have said, we will work with you because you said you're going to work with us. That's number one. Now, if we look at that in the context of what's happening here, mm -hmm. and you say, what's What's our line in the sand? Where are we going to fight you if we don't get what we want? I think I used the wrong word because you picked up on the word fight, and I and you. Well, oh, I heard my story. Yeah, I know, but here is a safe room. Sure. Did we not say it was a? So 
I apologize for using the word fight, and I don't want to be defined. Do you mean like discuss and like no, what explore I mean is opportunities? That challenge. Sure. Challenge. Challenge. Sure. challenge. Because at the end of the day, if they come back with that saying, we're not ready to give you that list, that puts a hindrance on the membership. I, I yes. And I want to know that CBA is going to do whatever they can to get authorized statements on that list. And I think right. that's a very no, fair no, question. No, that's not only fair. fair. If, if we're doing that, no, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing that. It's already expected. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're all on the same page. No, no, yeah, and, and we're all members. So even people of the that's board, yeah. we're actually yeah. members first. Okay. And then we're board members. We actually get board members later. Like, I, you know, but there's, so, no, there's no sellout here to help yeah. Canada. There's no, okay. it's, it's in everybody's everybody. I understand there's compromises. I guess I, I understand the concept of a compromise. But so, also, though, like, you know, sometimes everybody wins a little bit in each compromise. There's always one You're, winner. So, something's got lost. There's a specific some, way yeah. of things getting done. I, like, my thought, Mark, please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. My thought is there's a certain manner to get certain messages across. And if we follow along this path with them in the correct manner, we will have a voice. And, 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 the, key thing, yeah, and, and the key thing to point out is we do have a voice. And, and yeah. well, if we lose that, we're screwed. Things have <laughs> also so, gotten constantly get lost in translation and with CBA. <laughs> yes. People first on the outside. Absolutely. Uh, even members, members, all have to remember. Uh, and, and I'll use Kareem as a pure example. He works for Liquid e Juice, the, one of the largest. Uh, supply chain distribution companies in Canada. Okay, he has he's he's part of the board. He's a member of CBA, and everything that he's doing or uh, Charlie's doing or uh, anybody's doing, whether they're members or sitting on the board, but for some reason uh, they attack people on the board, thinking that they don't have the the vaping industry's best interest in mind. He's got everything at, at, as much at stake as you do, as I do, as shy, oh, as Charlie. Yeah. More. Yeah. More. No, he it. has more to lose like, than I do because okay. I own one store and he's part of a multi- I, 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 This is just all fear. It's all fear. All the pushback, all the anger. And I'm just gonna say this because I feel like I'm in touch with a lot of the angry members or the angry people, like I'm their leader. Um, <laughs> They're scared. And if all of you Sorry. on the board, no, no, hold on a second. It's not about you though, because they're the ones attacking CBA. And it's scary to watch people attack CBA because it scares the shit out of me, because I know that what you guys are doing, but just acknowledge their fear. They're scared shitless that they're gonna lose their house. They're gonna lose that car payment. And this is where fear takes some people is attacking. And I know it's not right. The, the people. Well, they need a fundamental understanding of the processes and what we're doing. I mean, we, yeah. they, don't, yeah. they don't have the yeah. board meetings. They don't. Yeah. Not board meetings, sorry, the, the public meetings. Yeah. I, I think fighting this type of uh, discussion publicly is going to go a long way to establishing mm -hmm. trust from the general public and the members. Okay. And, you know, I'm like, actually, I'm actually tired of the general. Uh, uh, that people are perceiving oh on the outside that CBA is doing oh. nothing. It's it's ridiculous. I mean. We're just building it now. Yeah, I, I mean, me. whether it call it fear or, or, or ignorance or hypocrisy or whatever you want to call it, there's a lot of people out there too that want to be heard and said, but they're also very aggressive and they like to attack and they... they, they, we, they can they, have they, constructive conversation. If there's a dark board, we're sitting in the middle of it right now. The CV, the, the board is. And, and, and me and Joe here and Angie and I think, yeah, and Maria and Lars, we're not board members here. I mean, it's, no, I'm, I'm just a member. I'm not even on I the board. I respect what you guys are doing. I'm not denying like your efforts or trying to minimize anybody's efforts because it's not easy and I would never be able to do that. What I'm just trying to say is from the other point of view is that it's fear. Manufacturing, so you want to be accredited under certain standards, guidelines, um, uh, protocols, practice with, with what's happening right now in the manufacturing space. So SCC is important. Uh, what you guys have done at ECTA in terms of the development of standards, all that's important at accreditation. So in effect, if you're in a manufacturing uh, environment, you must be able to demonstrate to the Government of Canada that you are accredited under a certified body. And the certified body can't be a for-profit uh, organization. It's got to be some organization that has legitimacy and legitimate standing by the government, i.e. Accreditation Canada, et cetera, et cetera. And they've told us that. at. Uh, at Health Canada and the Government of Canada, that that body would then work with your uh, with your uh, standards-making organization to accredit those who would be legitimate, therefore, in the eyes of the government to do that manufacturing 
et cetera, et cetera. That gives the industry then, CBA and the industry, the right to say, don't buy from that guy because he's not accredited. Buy from that guy because he is accredited. So who creates that actual accreditation? Like so a, the, the, as being ISO certified, you mean you're accredited? That's no, 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 no. That's, no. that's, a, that's, a, yeah. that's part of the yeah. process. So the accrediting body would yeah. have to be some recognized organization by that Health Canada. There are, two, there are two organizations right now that Health Canada has directed yeah. us to. The accreditating, Accreditation Council of Canada yeah. and, uh, and Accreditation Canada. Those yeah. two organizations. So we have to work to, we've said this right from the start, that ECTA and CBA should be working together on what those, uh, what those parameters are and, and, and hand it off to that organization that can accredit. Yeah. And they have a process, and that process is, it's, it's very prescriptive, uh, Shai, because what they actually do is they, 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 everybody who's in the manufacturing sector would then commit to a process and say, I'm gonna put this much money on the table every year to, to submit and commit to an accreditation process and they actually come and they go through a checklist. Yeah. It's very, very prescriptive. And then you're given uh, your, your accreditation sticker, you just put it on your door, and, and everybody knows that you're qualified to do that. Certification is completely Just like every other industry. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's yeah. It and that, that includes, that includes, uh, sure, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. that includes yeah. all of the reporting and, <laughs> and things like recall legislation that you were talking about earlier on, recall processes, et cetera, et cetera. All of that stuff is, is in there. Certification speaks to what we were talking about earlier on about, about what qualifies you to be on the other side of a, of a, of a, counter. Of a counter, counter, which is Joe's to, to, <coughs> to detail somebody in public so about that. Yeah, it is training. Yeah. And then you're given, so we have developed with uh, a private career college, <coughs> and that private career college will use their license, and right now we're qualified in five or six different uh, provinces. Mm -hmm. We're still working on Ontario, Quebec. Uh, we're, we're, we're actually holding a Kaizen for them too. Yeah. yeah, and so we're in Saskatchewan, we're in Manitoba, we're in Alberta, we're in British Columbia. Uh, so we got, I think we're in Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. but we've, we've, we're looking at other provinces to say to this private career college, you use your license to certify our people under this criteria on what they can or can't do. And so that's what you're saying to uh, the government of Canada and to Health Canada mm -hmm. on Monday. So and basically he, the industry is working towards getting accreditation and certification yep. to right. legitimize the industry in health Canada. Like Correct. And if I could, Shai, we so said that we're not, we're, so not making it, we're not making anything up. Uh, Daryl said this at the outset. That was one of the first sentences that ever came out of our mouths when we met with uh, uh, the government of Canada and the government of Ottawa. Or the government in uh, Ontario. I'm just putting it out so whenever people are listening to it. I'm trying to answer their questions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and that, that was so the difference between certification and accreditation, a shop or a lab would be accredited. Yes. And the uh, people that work there would be certified. Correct. Certified. Correct. certified. So, okay. okay. Yep. So I'm going to And, and, and even, too, even too, excuse me for a second, before hold that thought. Even if, even if, Lars, we think that Health Canada will go to the, um, the, the they'll get granular to say that a vape shop must be accredited too. I'm, I'm, expect, I'm actually, well, I was awesome actually, sure. yeah, yeah. I was actually yeah. expecting that. I, I believe sooner or later, uh, you're right down to your staff is going to have to be. Well, sir, staff to be certified. Certified. Yeah, the shop yeah, itself the, will be accredited. The, the shop will have to be accredited and the staff will have to be certified. I believe we all are. Like you're saying before, there are so many, the competition is killing yeah, us and a lot of even but more so. The shop itself has to be certified. Yeah, we're in a question. Sorry, just to simplify even further for me, accreditation is when you make something, certification would be where you would No, accreditation legitimizes your ability to exist. The business. Yeah. So accreditation is the business. So certification. Okay, yeah. accreditation. So I would, as a business, eventually would need both. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. My yes. second part of this, and to go back to what people are fearful for, mm. is this is not CBA. It's a CBA initiative. Yes. The initiative. Yes. But it's not a CBA program because CBA in itself can't do standards no. testing or accreditation no. testing. No. It's about working with what we already have. To establish it. These, these to establish them. Yeah. Okay, so proposal number 10. Uh, Health Canada proposes to establish regulations to help limit youth exposure to information and brand preference advertising of vaping products. These regulations would, it, would, it, would include restrictions on, on the type, medium, and content of advertising of vaping products in line with the objectives of the proposed TVPA 
Restrictions would also be based on limiting advertising that has a high likelihood of being viewed by you, while still allowing vaping product manufacturers to advertise their products and brands to adult smokers. Restrictions would therefore seek to limit advertising in or near locations that are attended predominantly by youth, such as schools, parks, recreational and sporting facilities. Restrictions would, <clears throat> would also be placed on advertising in certain media, for example, by either prohibiting advertisements on television and radio or restrict the times of the day when such ads may appear to be heard to limit youth exposure to. So if I could, Mr. Um, Chairman, sure. I, I think uh, this is a very interesting proposal. Absolutely. And I, I don't, I think Health Canada is really leveling a bias here. So it looks to me as if they might be uh, telling us that they would be very interested in, in uh, not having any advertising at all. So that, that uh, in of itself could be very problematic for the industry yep. as we're moving forward from a, a, a public health perspective with this as a viable <coughs> alternative to uh, smoking cigarettes. And we said to Health Canada very clearly, you prohibit uh, this as a, an alternative to smoking and you could really drive it underground. So you gotta be very careful on what we, um, on, on how we respond to Proposal 10 so that we don't look like we're saying uh, anything that would limit our future in terms of uh, providing um, uh, an incentive mm -hmm. for for this as opposed to smoking the signal. Sure. So yeah, if I could, sense. if I could, um, it's, again, we go back to this whole thing about going clause by clause on this. I think in Proposal 10, as a solution, Mr. Chairman, I don't want to get into it right now, <laughs> but we got to have a preamble to that that sort of, uh, that's, that, that sure. suggests that. Sure. Well, ed education versus, uh, versus advertising is something that I still I still struggle with as a definition. That's the... What do you mean by that? What's, well, what's advertising and what's educating? Yeah, yeah what's educating it? Because when, when, I, when I look at vaping and then vaping being less harmful, to me that's education, right? Um, as opposed to the cloud uh, puffing, sorry, cloud, cloud chasing, cloud which to me is more advertising of lifestyle. So having a clear definition of those two in my mind would be helpful. So, so Shy's ad right now in the TTC yeah. or 180. That would not be approved. Well, would that, would, so, no, would it be? so I have a question to ask. What role would CRTC and the standards count, the ad, the advertising standards count for Canada? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm making that This this, this trumps all that. It trumps. So it does. Health Canada has the yeah. ability to so, so my uh, question is, how does this relate to having a website and having online sales? So I mean, that's a great question. That's a good question, Mr. Chairman, because if you go, if you look yeah. right in that, because I know a lot of people have certain, personally certain asked me and about this in regards and to And that. again, clarifying what is advertising is some guy putting a hand chuck of my product, which I have no control over. Does that be, which you know, I may appreciate it because it helps sell my product. Yeah. But is is that considered advertising, or is that considered a social yeah. media? Yeah, social media, yeah. whatever. So, so but again, social media, I think, w is I think what they're, what they're looking for here, uh, they've even said it by example. Uh, traditional television, television and yeah, radio. traditional so media. Like, yeah, it's more like, uh, let's say, bus. Look, from the way I read it is like a bus stop or yeah. Yeah. that's no what I was thinking. The, 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 a, a the subway. So, what information Sorry. are they trying to this limit you to? Well, that that is. Uh, that's a very good, yeah. good question, and again, I think it behooves us, Mr. Chairman, to, yeah. to, to <laughs> sort of uh, at least give some advice back to the government on what that is. Because we were talking earlier on, somebody yeah. had said we can't be promoting lifestyle, uh, so we gotta we gotta be very cr uh, clear on that. I think you know, we're in the business of getting people to uh, to use uh, vape products as an alternative to smoking the cigarette, mm -hmm. and there needs to be an incentive for that. So we have to we have to look at at how do we how do we portray that in public? I think, Boris, you've had some uh, ideas about that in terms of communication about what we need to do. Yeah, no. we, uh, we cannot, uh, obviously, lifestyle has to go out, but we cannot restrict uh, uh, the types of medium that we're advertising at the very, uh, at least as long as alcohol companies are allowed to advertise, that's an adult product. And uh, 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 this is the driving force behind the conversion. So, so our objective, and I think Health Canada would agree, that we need to convert the maximum amount of smokers at, at the quickest amount of time. And without advertising, that process slows down to a halt. So, 
Uh, my, my question regarding this is I look at this and I look at what happened in Quebec. Yeah, how, it is, how it is there right now. Is, is this also have the potential to include, for example, in Quebec, if you're, the windows of your, your store are not frosted, or you know, if, if people can see from the outside into your store, that's, they consider that almost advertising. Because uh, people can see the products. Personal opinion, shops should be doing that anyway. I agree, I agree as well. Look, I, I agree, that, that, that's a separate issue. So, but well, the, only reason why I'm, the only reason why I'm bringing up Quebec as an example is, is, is this, would that also, yeah. Yeah. And again, that's why we did it because of the, the, the cigar shops have the thing where they're allowed to display their tobacco products because they're predominantly of age and they have a law grandfathered in. So what I'd like to clarify, it's not, it's not the issue that matter if, should they have their windows crossed or not. I agree that they should. But what I'm saying is, looking at the way it is in Quebec right now, does that also include the, the, the stores themselves would advertise. Can you read the way proposal ten is written, though? Yeah, it, could it affect the stores, the so retails? The way, the way that I'm reading ten as the same way you're reading ten. Yeah. Right. Um, from what I see, the, the focus is really on the youth. So no, no, so, so but, but, I, but I like to go further than that. Sure. I'll, I'll give you an example. I know for a fact. I know one of the shop owners personally were fined heavily yeah. because they had you know, stickers, yeah. stickers of. Uh, a popular juice line on their counter in their store, and that was considered advertisement. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So I, I want to to what extent this store? goes? Is it on in the store? store? Is it on in the store? store? Is it is this on just social media, and internet, a website, or the whole media? Yeah. 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 So so it doesn't even go, it doesn't even go that deep. Only to yeah. 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 So only on TV, it's not only inside the stores. Billboards, signage, stores. So like you may not be able to put a lawn sign outside your store anymore. Yes, I might right. not be able to do that. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's important that we we have that level of clarification. Yeah. Right, for sure. sure. But, but also, again, don't don't. I want to I want to make the point very clear. Oh, okay. no, but don't let's not let's not give them uh, at Health Canada the right to and tell us why. Yeah. What we should be saying to them is, here we thought of this, and yeah. here's what we're yeah. we're suggesting ought to be because we're going to limit. Um, and this is an issue, Mr. Chairman, that we got to talk about. Yep. We got to limit access to these, but we can't limit access so that somebody, because this could happen, and it happens in uh, on, on Hastings in Vancouver all the time, where somebody goes in to get marijuana and leaves their kid on the sidewalk because they're not allowed into the store. Mm -hmm. So we got to be very care careful about that. So what we did in the regulations in British Columbia is we said you can come into this area, but in order to be detailed, you can't go past that door. So your kids could be here. But that door is the door that goes outside. So seemingly, you solve that problem where you're leaving a kid out of the sidewalk. That's one of the reasons that we've in. never restricted parents allowed to bring their kids in the right. store. We do have a nine, and you must be 19 policy. Um, and and if, if a parent brings their 15 year old in, I'll ask them if they could please leave, if they could just wait outside because this yeah. is, uh, we're, we're working on regulations and we're, we're just trying. And the number one thing the government wants is to protect the youth. So, so, so but, but, I, I wanna, I, but I'm not going to ask somebody to leave their three-year-old no, in the car. No, but, 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 right? but I'll tell you, the government of Ontario spends $30 million a year uh, through Ontario Lottery Gaming Corporation for security to walk around parking lots at all of their casinos to see if their kid's in the car. Yeah, because they leave their kids in their car. How do you keep testing, how do you keep in-store testing, or sampling, sorry, uh, in-store sampling, and still say it doesn't matter what person comes in there under age majority. Right. You can't have both. So, so you pick one or the other. So we got to be for this proposal, though. For my business in particular, I use uh, I use Facebook, I, I use Instagram, and I have my website for online yeah. sales. All of these, which are under this, are very susceptible uh, to scrutiny. Right. So my question is then, with this proposal, are they? They're looking to us then to to say this is what we're looking for. Like we still want to let's say uh, to be able to post on Instagram for products that we sell, uh, including on Facebook and whatever. Like radio ads, TV, all that. I, I know is Instagram not, can work exactly like a website. Yeah. Or your Instagram page can actually say overnight. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so it's based on the owner's responsibility. How much do we as a business need to ensure that we? done this limited exposure. So for example, what do we need to do? Do we need to do this now? We use radio all the time in Fort Hope. We use radio, we use, uh, and then this caught my eye because we also do mailers. What 
like statistics, like where is their definition? So I went on the website, the radio's website, to see what their listenership is. They have a very low listenership for youth. But then when I went to Statistics Canada's website, their numbers were nowhere close to what the radio station's numbers so were. Come around, this, this speaks to um, accreditation too. So yeah. what you say, because under accreditation, you want to look at, at protocols, best practices, right? Yeah. So it's not necessarily that you, you got to be careful too by suggesting uh, a, your opinion that this be left to the individual score only. So we have to, again, we have to put ourselves in a position, Mr. Chairman, of this to submit to an accreditation standard. And part of that accreditation standard would be uh, the, the, yeah, the types of the types of advertising sure. with the proviso or preambles. I know this is getting to solution, sure, but sure. It, it all boils down. Well, to that's getting to a complete separate kinds of. But, right? but I do think, like when you're looking at this, is that's where they're going to want to hear. Asking for what do you want us to do? How do we? What are the checks in our box? Like what, what's so, our yeah. checklist? So this again. Well, this hold is on, fun. hold so, on a second so, though. I just reread that over again. Yep. Just because it's fun. And the first sentence tells you the answer to the rest. Yes. It's about the fucking kids. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So and it's establishing. So, so yeah. it's, they're looking to establish so how that's so, market right. and to ensure. And if you read the second part, uh, limit advertising near locations of schools and so forth. Right. And they're talking about a university. They're, they're obviously talking about. Like, they're they're not. Schools. They're not talking about Instagram yeah. or websites. Yeah. As I read it, with with that first disclaimer Traditional that says. We need to protect the kids, is, yeah. is how I read well, that first one. My, 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 my fear with that is, is that if they treat it the same way they do with tobacco products, right. it's all done. Yeah. There's no websites, right. there's no uh, uh, so, I, so, so that's no advertising at so, any level, yeah. period. Yeah. So like when you, right now, when you want to go buy cigarettes. But Boris's point was you can't even see the cigarettes. cigarettes. Yeah. Boris, you know, called out right away. It's not his first time that he's called it out, because we've talked about this before. He said we should be able to market vaping the same way alcohol is vaping. Yes. Agreed. Yes. But doesn't that get us in a little thing? Like uh, yeah, a yeah. little like I don't like to say we need to do it the same way as that because then well, we're no, different. We're well, we don't know. Then the government and never wants to hear that. Further because alcohol already is such a precedent where they're allowed to sell online, they're allowed to advertise, they're allowed to advertise. But the thing is, it's not a direct precedent. When we're, when we're marked, but it's, a, it's an adult product. When we're legislated as tobacco, though, though, it's yeah. more likely that they're going to fall to tobacco yeah, regs than alcohol regs. Right. And that's the thing that concerns me yeah. uh, by being included with the tobacco because, like everyone says, you can get candy flavored vodka and you can get candy flavored booze, so, but they're not putting us under the Liquor Act, they're putting us in the Tobacco Act. So that's, so that I, is. I, I, I think on that note, we should be proposing to the government regarding this is things like that uh, we do, which, you know, again, it's also very loose too, that, that could be subject to scrutiny, is that we do age verification yep. on our websites that sales, uh, done on, sales done online for products, uh, all the reputable shops and the ones that do it right all send out packages requiring adult signature only. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to, I think it'd be a good idea to let them know what we currently have in place of sales of the product through social media that shops have already taken on the responsibility of sending out with 19 plus signature only and all that stuff. I think what we should be, what we should be asking for too though is to allow to have websites and to advertise to targeted age groups above the legal age within social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook. Well, maybe Facebook would let us advertise if you actually have well, some Facebook, yeah. Facebook, Facebook, yeah. Yeah. Facebook, 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 Facebook right is a little weird. They don't allow you to advertise. If you try to do their paid advertising. No, no, I'm talking about their paid advertising. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, and the reason is because it's considered illegal. But right. in the States, they don't allow you to advertise, and in the States, they already have a premium. In, in, in Quebec right now, if you're a shop, you even so much as put up an Instagram post for a product, yeah, yeah, and you're, you're, you're done. So you're gonna get charged. Here's my question: What happens if I put up an Instagram post for some shop nothing, in Quebec? Nothing. 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 So, so for then, example, my, so then I all I have nothing. to do for my advertising is they're going to investigate some, big. Some, of course, no, I, I, that's, 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 that's what does a shop boom in Ottawa. Yeah. Because a lot of these Quebec places of open up a shop in Ottawa, uh, in Ottawa, even if they're losing money, just advertise. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be nothing. Though. Believe it or not. Yeah. So the, the point that I'm getting at with this proposal is, we gotta. We should let them know what we're currently what we're currently doing, which is all the you know 19 plus sales and yeah. shipping out 
and uh, what we are, we're hoping to get. And in, in my eyes, even if at least we still have our, but the thing that worries me the most is even the retail fronts. But, but to that point, Stores. and again, this is for a later topic, but just a call out, without accreditation, even us stating that doesn't say anything. Doesn't mean nothing. Uh, unless everybody's on the same board. But Mr. Chairman, I think uh, Daryl made the point at the point where you know, the goal is to improve these sessions and make them more effective. So if we could just go around the table, Maria, starting with you, just two things that you thought that went well, maybe one or two things that we could change to make better for next time, and, and just your thoughts on the experience. Um, I like, I like, I don't know. Um, I like the fact that, I like looking at the words up there. I like the fact that Mark over there really broke it down, gave us a different way of looking at it, especially that sentence by sentence. Yep. Because when you look at it sentence by sentence and you that, that really helped me. For sure. Read this in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was just way too much information to cover in a short, pe short period of time. And I think these- Relatively. <laughs> relative, <laughs> no, it is though. Like, yep. We could have gone all day on Prop 10. Yep. Um, but I do, I do also, one thing that I did like, I, I like the fact that it allowed to ebb and flow into other conversations, but it was able to go back. Like I like the, we're going off topic because it really stayed off topic of our concerns and stuff. Awesome. But yeah, I would make this a little bit longer. Maybe a couple days or something. I would think it would be like, you know, let's do this. We don't have the time right now, but on the next issue, especially with accreditation, if that's something that would be a membership, we're doing a six week Kaizen and it's every Monday for four hours. Sure. Sure. With the same people because then that would be, and then takeaways. You sure. can take something away. That's sure. my feedback. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you for coming again. Oh, thank yeah. you for including me. Lawrence. I just want to say thanks for being, uh, allowing me to be included. Um, What's my idea? <laughs> I know that I have a lot of opinions that differ from a lot of other people, and I'm glad that I got to uh, to um, put them out, and I appreciate it. And I, I I feel better than I did before I got here, and before, when uh, um, this was talked about. So I'm 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 glad about that, and I look forward to hopefully being part of anything else. Uh, if 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 I'm you ask, I will show up. Awesome, fantastic, thank you. I. I I think this was a absolute success. I think we have a great cross section of representatives here. Um, I like that we could get in some healthy debates, and we did maintain the safe space environments. We can get heated. That's cool. That's what we're doing here. Uh, next time, obviously, we're missing a couple people today that just couldn't make it last minute. But a few more people in the room, I think, would be beneficial. Just to have a couple more voices. But to your point, Lars, we love the different opinions. We love the completely, you know, separate. Let's get into it. And get everything out there. That represents a real actor, even with the, the radio advertising. Too. We got a lot of different perspectives today, and uh, the food was awesome. So, <laughs> I'm going to echo a lot of the same sentiments. Um, I like the cross section diversity across the entire industry. Um, being my first time in this kind of exercise, I thought the whole thing overall was enlightening and awesome. an amazing way to tackle a big, huge issue. Um, more time certainly would have helped. Uh, either that or an encounter dipped burritos positive and make it a negative is focus more on what the actual discussion is to get through all this information. Otherwise, you're going to have to spill over two days sure. to have tangents, but still come back. That, that would be my take on it. But overall, fantastic, and I would be more than happy to be a part of any of those. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for making the trip. Yes, yeah, great. Yeah, it be. Uh, yeah. Same, uh, I echo all the positive statements. Uh, uh, my two takeaways from today is I do think we need to make this more of our culture. Uh, from the CBA, and I think as we uh, continue to build on our culture and uh, mature as an organization, that uh, it'll add to uh, the transparency because these are what the conversations have always been. Yep. Now they're just getting more broad. And um, and thank you for always challenging. Uh, I learn so much every time. So the investment that uh, that you're making in your organization allows us to uh, make a library uh, that we can look on this with future leaders. Uh, and current leaders, uh, three years from now, four years from now, and use it as a as our as our benchmarks. Sure. So we're, we're we're creating history. So uh, uh, in terms of opportunities for improvement, uh, not only should we make this part of our culture, but these should be planned all throughout the year. So I think that's one takeaway for me as the organization is to make a calendar, and then we can get different supplementary mm -hmm. experts in this. But I'd like to plan this out through the through all twenty eighteen. Awesome, Mr. Chairman. Through you, I think this was a great day. I think anthropologically, this is exactly what happens in these kinds of environments. 
So it worked out extraordinarily well. I think the outcome that, that I anticipated is exactly what I think you've got. So kudos to you for doing this, and I think you, you did a great job of moderating this session here, here. and weaving everything back together. I think you did a super job. Yes. The, the, the challenge going forward is to continue along this path, but what I'm really encouraged about is that people around this room who came in here who were probably full of animosity at the outset are not now, and I think that's a, a big win in this. I, I'm, I'm really grateful to you for Thank doing you. this. I think the, the whole exercise was awesome. It, uh, it answered questions I had that I didn't know the answers to before I came here. It was awesome to see people that I haven't really had a chance to, to debate with in, in this kind of, kind of an environment and actually get the answers I was looking for to get. I'm also really happy about the fact that it's recorded and it's publicly, publicly available because that was a big concern I had beforehand was that I didn't feel there was en enough transparency for the CBA. And now I think that that issue is solved, and I think a lot of people are going to appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As for me, I was here more to listen than voice to my opinion. I'm unfortunately not a member of CBA. I've never been approached to become a member, so this was an awesome opportunity just to come to see what it actually is and what what you guys are doing. And going forward, I would love to be a part of more meetings. Yay. And, you know, hopefully then make, you know, become that member because, you know, to be a part of something. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. And I just want to mention, so Angie did fly, and it is her birthday. Yeah. Oh! So I I was going to say, first of all, I'm allergic to this. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I have a uh, newfound respect for how Charlie speaks. There you go. Uh, second of all, it was really great just to, uh, you know, in the everyday life, we all, to some degree, we compete against each other at a business level. Uh, but it's nice to see that we can all come together in a room and work together on, on the issues that matter for this industry. With a lot of different people with a lot of different opinions but ultimately at the end of the day i think uh, sessions like this prove that uh, this is not just about uh, an organization it's about the people you know rather than this sure. people always focus on the three letters cba and uh, i think more of this is absolutely necessary i think it's going to make the current members uh, if they have a i think a lot of the uh, the animosity that's out there is that they feel like they don't either have a, uh, a chance to be heard because they do, uh, you know, they either have to, they listen if they choose to participate on the online stuff, but this gives them a platform to feel appreciated uh, as well. So I think a lot more of this is important. Uh, filming it and, and putting it out there for the larger groups to see what is being done is a lot, uh, I think it's going to be really healthy. So uh, I, I don't think, uh, other than maybe what Charlie was suggesting that, Get a few, squeeze in a few more people in sure. a bigger room like this. But I think it, this is phenomenal. Well done. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Um, and Joe's birthday's tomorrow, by the way. Yeah. Happy yeah. early birthday, Joe. Yeah. Joe's turning 60, too. Yeah, you're <laughs> not. Fruit's gonna string you up. Yeah, so exactly. I really enjoyed the diversity in the room, the fact that we have experts from various uh, sides of the industry and, and uh, uh, the country. And I really hope this becomes a tradition. And I'm a big believer in crowdsourcing. And the last thing, if I can sing happy birthday to Angie, that'll be great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Angie. And happy birthday to you. So we're all excited for that, Jesus. He was beatboxing. Honestly, guys, I, I just want to say thank you very much. You guys took time out of your business, time out of your day. Uh, it is past hours. I don't know what your hours are, but thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. For everybody that came in, thank you again. And with that, I'd like to close the meeting. We're good.